Welcome in, guys. Come on in. Today we're going to be doing part two of um, identifying the marriage breaking spirit. I want you guys to come in, sign on. Um, uh, we want to pick up on part two, amen? <laughs> it's been a real fight to get this out. God bless you, Zelly. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome in. Fantastic. <laughs> I can see Zelly. Zelly. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Welcome in. Pinda Pinda. I haven't seen you in a little while, Pinda. Anne Boleg. Welcome in. God bless you. Welcome in. Um, Sug Smith. Hey, how you doing? Marino. I haven't seen you in a little while, Marino. All the way from, I think, the Netherlands. God bless you, Tonja. Deidre. God bless you, Deidre. And Tonja. Welcome in, guys. I want you to do me a favor and invite some people in because um, we're going to go into part two. Amen? Judge Franklin, how are you? And Chantel, God bless you. Welcome in, Judge Franklin. Clisilda, Sandra Ham, it's good to see you on. Uh, Chandra, good to see you on. Good to see you on, Judge. And Clisilda, Ches Chesia, God, God bless you. Gilly Christian, God bless you. Welcome in. How you doing, uh, girly Christian? We gotta connect this week, amen. We can connect. You can either call me or I can call you uh, between tomorrow and and um, probably on Monday between those times. Let's see if we can connect. Hallelujah. So we're gonna just go ahead and uh, continue to pick up where we left off. Um, we discussed last week that the marriage is a covenant or a contract. First of all, Father, I ask that you bless this, uh, bless this session, and bless Father God, uh, everyone who's on the session. I ask that you bless them, and God, not only that, but you cover them. Hi, how you doing, Giselle and Kaz, Brad, all the way from London. Giselle, how you doing, Brickell? Good afternoon, Brickell. <laughs> yes, I suppose to pray for Brickell. Uh, uh, something I'm supposed to do with her. So I haven't forgotten that, uh, woman of God. I haven't forgotten that. Just uh, we need to disarrange the time. Hi, Debbie. Praise God. So we recognize that marriage is a covenant. Amen? It's it's a covenant created in the garden. And when you go before a, a judge, uh, a pastor, I gotta say judge, because you can't go before the justice of a peace too and have it done like that. But <clears throat> you'll go before a pastor or a priest or, or um, a, marriage, a marriage officer and you'll have a ceremony performed. The reason why you go through the ceremony because it's uh, it's a contract, amen. It's an agreement, and this contract is binding. It agrees for each party to do something. You will do something, and I will do something. So we're gonna just uh, go before God and man. Hi, how you doing, Tyan? God bless you. Tyan Williams, God bless you. And Nicole, how you doing? You're on today, Nicole. Good, good, excellent. And so. The contract is really a legal guarantee of the marriage. All right. So another word for marriage will be we've just made an agreement. We've just made a lifetime agreement to marry each other. And to marry means to literally become one. Amen. That's why uh, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the word cleave means stick, bond. You become one, become enmeshed, entitled. And so God did that so you could have an idea of what it is, um, what he's trying to say with the church. He's marrying the church. But what happens is the covenant sometimes get broken. And in the book of, uh, in, the olden, in the Old Testament, Moses talks about it, I think in Exodus and Genesis, Genesis, he talks about how the only reason why you could get a divorce and only because of the hardness of your heart was because of adultery. Amen? Or, or because of uh, sexual immorality on one of the parties, one of the parties concerned, whether it's the man or the woman. But you know, it still, it still could be resolved. It's not over yet. But what happened is when you break the covenant, there are a lot of things that happen. There are a lot of um, issues that happen uh, in terms of the covenant being broken. You allow another party in that can cause problems in the marriage, 
that can cause situations and and what that does is it it now makes you three all right three it's not the holy ghost in you and your your spouse but it's now you and someone else because the holy spirit has moved out of the way because of the infidelity or the cheating or the other woman or the strange man or the strange family and we talked about the strange the strange woman ain't just the, ain't just the, the other woman out there all right the strange woman could really be your mother-in-law your cousin-in-law your best friend <laughs> your best buddy who is coming in between the covenant some people have the strange woman or the strange person around them who is their best friend they once had the person where they could access them day and night or her day and night they could call them whenever they want to they could do anything they wanted to do with the person because they always had access to the person because the person was unattached they were single now here is one of the persons get married and now things change he can't come around as like he wants to they can't go out and hang out like how they used to they can't do what they used to do because now the man is married so he begins to hate upon the marriage or she begins to hate upon the marriage and she begins to wish her friend was single again and she begins to hate the person who they feel is the object of their uh, problem which is probably the other spouse whether it be the man or the woman and so this person now begins to speak about the marriage he begins to curse the marriage he begins to uh, uh, you know, literally um, tear the marriage down daily and then he figured out a way to get his friend or his buddy to hang out together or to draw him away or to undermine the marriage or to even find another woman or another guy that they could introduce because they just want their friend back they want the good old times but it's being selfish they're being selfish now a father could be that way with his daughter or his son seeming with a mother or mother-in-law or whoever it may be they could go to the place where they begin to actually do strange things to you. They could actually go to the place where they begin to uh, uh, invoke curses upon the marriage. That's why you should always be very careful who you let into your circle and you should stay prayed up. You should always be praying because there are a lot of people that are around you <clears throat> that are not really for you. Okay? And so they might actually be jealous of the fact that you got married before them. You could have gotten married and they hate the marriage. They don't like the fact that you got married. Uh, they always wanted to have the marriage as well. They wanted the fairy tale marriage, but it never worked out. So they've employed tactics to get your marriage back to uh, square one. They will employ every type of hole they can. And then we also talked about the strange man and the strange woman who are professionals. They're like lion, young lions, as we talked about in Isaiah they're like young lions and they grab hold of their prey they grab hold of their prey and they hold on to their prey <laughs> and there's no one to stop it it talks about it in Isaiah how God bless you Pastor Anderson good to see you man of God it was a pleasure and what it does is uh, it is designed to destroy the marriage so they use their charm because they're young a young lion he's full of his power he's full of, he's full of himself you know, a young lioness, she's full of herself, her prowess, her beauty, her good looks, her charm. So they will use this uh, intentionally to break the marriage up. There are people who said, I know I can get this man. I don't care who he's seeing and I want him. And they intentionally go about destroying the marriage. There are people who are shameless in what they're doing and they went about to destroy the marriage. Uh, some of them will come into your ministry, into your church. They'll come into your personal life. And we talked about the story about how this young lady was taken in by this pastor and his wife and she from within remember now for someone to come and do you something you have to let them in it's an old concept but it, it, it holds true you have to open a doorway so even when the other woman is in it's not entirely the other woman or the other man or, or the strange woman or strange man's um, uh, 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 faults altogether they had to have an entry point. There had to be a crack. There had to be a crevice. There had to be a doorway. There had to be a seam. There had to be something that was going on in the marriage to cause it to happen. Maybe one of the partners wasn't being truthful um, in, in telling the other partner how they were feeling. They might have been unhappy for years or they might have uh, you know, not expressed their feelings. Maybe one person undermined them. Maybe they had ideas, and every time they have an idea, the person knocks it down or controls them. See, all this could build up. It builds up over time. 
you know, one person is always the one who ends up happy at the end of the day, the other one isn't happy, or, you know, they don't talk about it. And another thing that is also a marriage-breaking spirit is going to bed, going to bed um, angry. <laughs> the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed angry because by the time you go to bed angry and you wake up the next morning, what was just a little small thing, a little small uh, pea, it was a little small pebble, now it's in the mountain. Because what happened is, by and large, the enemy has taken what you've uh, internalized and magnified it a thousand folds. Now, one of the partners might be saying, hey, listen, you know, you know, let's make up, you know, I'm sorry for what I did. But the other partner could be so uh, incensed or felt he was so wronged and, and just really not want to open up and receive the forgiveness. And so that leaves an open door right there for the enemy to get in. Amen? So uh, we see that this is something that comes very subtly. It doesn't happen overnight. There are a lot of people who are not happy that you are married, that you find your significant other, that you found your ribs, as we say. <laughs> you found your ribs. There are a lot of people that will fight it, some for different motives as well as for different reasons. And one of the, one of the things they do is they will begin to undermine the relationship and pray against it so that the covenant will not stand. Amen? So when you find that your spouse is mad with you, angry with you, for no reason constantly, or you constantly fighting for no reason, it's for silly things, it's for uh, things that don't make sense. When you really look at it, it's like, what are we even arguing for? That doesn't even make sense. This is, this is complete nonsensicalness. So that tells me that there is a spirit that's operating behind the scene that doesn't want to see you uh, happy, amen? It could be a spirit spouse, which we've talked about as well, that is, uh, that is, that is fighting the marriage from a covenant, covenants that has been formed that you know not of, covenants that has been formed before you were even born, covenants that was formed 20 years prior. <laughs> and people don't like to talk about this, but this is what happens. Sometimes the covenant is is uh, so strong that you've been for deliverance before, you've, you've been for prayers before, but you find yourself slowly but surely over a period of time, maybe a year or two, you find yourself right back into that same situation or that same circumstance that you were delivered from. That means that this is a spirit husband or spirit wife that has been fighting your life consistently and now it wants to get back in because the Bible talks about when a spirit is cast out it goes into dry places for a little while. I mean, it doesn't like it. It hates it because to be out of a body means that, that it, it is literally uh, uh, uncomfortable. It hates it. It's like a desert to the spirit. So they roam around bodiless. And so they eventually will come back to check to see if if the house is swept and clean and garnished. And in other words, it, it wants to see if you're still maintaining your deliverance. Amen? And so we see that this is something that happened from the garden. Uh, the Garden of Eden in Genesis 6 is when the sons of God, which means the Beni Hai Elohim, made it with women. After they made it with the women, they created something called uh, the Nephilims, or, or, or they, they created a fallen. Amen? They were fallen beings. They were fallen ones. And these watchers, these uh, sons of God, uh, created powerful, enlightened, uh, lustful beings that the Lord had to destroy eventually. He had to kill them off through a flood. These dispossessed spirits, they were not angels, they were not humans. They were a hybrid offspring of race. They had a body before. That's why they longed to get in the body. That's why they longed to possess you. Because I was saying, why would a fallen angel even want to possess you? Because they have a greater body in terms of their body, in terms of their uh, uh, constitution. Spiritually, even though they're fallen, they still have uh, 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 a greater dimension of, of a higher higher form that we have until we are totally changed and transformed. So that makes perfect sense to know that the fallen the uh, the, uh, the 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 children of the watchers, which are evil spirits, are what is possessing and trying to get in your body. That's why we see so much deliverance. In deliverance, we see the spirits fighting us and say they tell us that they want to be here. They are. Uh, 
They don't want me to go. I was with them when they went through all kinds of problems. I was their husband when they was down. I comfort them when they was going through hardship. They want me here. They can't leave me. They, they, they'll never let me go. I have a right to them. They will tell you that they have legal rights to them. And then only after punishing them and praying and, and making them talk, they will tell you how they got in. Because one of the reasons they love to stay hidden is because they want to control your life. It's almost like a ghost in the shell. Have you guys watched the movie Ghost in the Shell? Uh, uh, recently, I think they had a movie with a very popular actress. Uh, I can't remember her name right now, but I know she starred in a lot of a lot of those Avenger movies and stuff like that. And um, she's very popular now. Very, I think she's an A-list a actor. Well, what happened is they are almost like that in terms of the spiritual value. They want to come inside of you. They want to they want to do their evil deeds. They want to satisfy their evil gratifications, their evil lust. Have you ever felt uncontrollable? urges to do something and you don't know why you want to do it? Have you ever felt uncontrollable urge to, to do something and you said, I pray, I fast, I go before God, I have, I, I tithe, I give, I, I live a life as holy, I am always in repentance, but yet at a certain time, I find myself going back into the same secret sin, the same pet sin, the same, the same thing that I'm, I'm not proud of it, I'm ashamed of it, I feel guilty about it, I feel... Uh, defile when I do it. I don't know how to stop it. I've tried so many ways to stop it, but I yet can't seem to get a grip on it. And it's a very secret sin. It's very shameful to me, and I'm battling with it. If that is you, that means that there is something in your life that still has a hold on you. It still has a aspect of you. Yes, Christians can be oppressed, but not fully possessed. All right? They can be oppressed but not fully possessed and they can be fighting you. That's why they hate for you to pray. That's why you'll find the first thing that they attack is your prayer life. If you've been struggling in your prayer life and you find it hard to get into prayer, you find it get hard to get into to worship, you, you, you get angry when you see talks like this. <laughs> you get angry, you feel angry when uh, the pastor is talking about stuff like this or the pastor or prophet uh, comes into the service you want to leave right away or the thing finds a way for you to leave either you make excuse by making a phone call and you have to get out of there that means that there's something that is trying to keep you away from getting delivered it's something that's trying to uh, keep you away from being exposed it doesn't want to be exposed uh, you might even start to begin to find fault in the service you might be right there listening to the pastor or preacher uh, minister and you start to find fault with him right there and you will hear something say i don't like this man i don't know why i don't like him you know, he, he's fake, he's phony, he ain't any real. Uh, blessings, Johnny. How you doing, Johnny? All the way from New Orleans. God bless you. Woman of God, welcome in. So what happens is, that means that there's something there that is preventing you from moving forward. Have you ever seen that you tried so many things in life and you can never seem to move forward? There's a limitation on your life. There's always problems in your life. There's one situation right after the next. There's a feeling of defilement. There's a feeling of contamination when you wake up in the morning, you find that things have been fighting you, you find that there's been uh, something that's been resisting you. You don't know why it's happening. You, you've, you've closed as much doors as you can. You've been doing uh, prayer work. As a matter of fact, you find that even they're attacking you more since you start to pray or you connected with a particular ministry. That's not always to say that the ministry is off or they have something wrong with them. What it's actually saying is that there might be uh, a, a point in case where the enemy is being exposed, the, the thing that's in you, the spiritual spouse, or the person that is even fighting you, and they don't want you to connect. They actually want to move you out of the danger zone for them. It's dangerous to them. So they will indeed attack the person's character. They'll attack what they're doing. They'll find fault, and they'll sometimes make it feel like it's you uh, saying it, so you'll begin to get frustrated, angry. You'll find fault. You'll pick, 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 and you don't even know why you're doing it, and, and you move out of the place, where you could have gotten delivered. If that's you, then that means that there is something still uh, uh, fighting you that you need to come to terms with. There are some things that you might have even gotten used to because it entered into your life through a state of trauma. That's how a lot of, of things come into us is through trauma. Amen? And so you'll get married and, and not have total deliverance in that area. And, and lo and behold, later on down the line, this thing manifests itself again. You might have been raped continually. Or you've been you might have been abused continually uh, by people that you trusted and loved, and had they had the, uh, the 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 responsibility and task of of nurturing you and bringing you up. Instead of that, they this 
They decided to try to destroy your life and they used you and abused you, amen? And, and now you've gotten out of that situation but it's not gotten out of you. Does that make sense? You've gotten out of that situation but it's not gotten out of you totally. But you don't want to be like that. You don't want to uh, be having these dreams where you're constantly um, entertaining sexual thoughts or, or you find this thing always messing with you at night time, fighting you at night time, uh, you know, because it's shameful and embarrassing. Um, and some people are pastoring, they're high up, they're well known, and they can't talk about it because it's embarrassing. Who do you go to? Who do you talk about it? And everybody at some point needs deliverance. I don't care who you are. I don't care how anointed you are, how called you are. You still need to go through the process of getting delivered because you, as a matter of fact, need it more than anybody else because you are the forefront. You are the, uh, the razor's edge. You're the tip of the spear. You are you're the vanguard. You're leading a charge against the adversary. He's going to make sure you are target. Uh, uh, public enemy number one in terms of targeting you with uh, these forces, amen. And so what happened is we know of a situation with a pastor that uh, is well known. He's he's an um, anointed man of God, preach uh, like nobody's business, totally anointed, but yet he beats his wife almost every night. That is also a marriage breaking spirit. You know, you don't want to go to counseling because you don't want anybody to know that you're going through this or that's happening in public and see it's shameful, it's embarrassing and the wife can't say nothing about it but yet she is tormented you know, it's like she's living on eggs uh, walking on eggs, she's living on pins and needles, walking on pins and needles because here is this man is anointed, well known in the community, has a very big ministry and yet every other night because of a spirit of anger, he beats his wife uh, another uh, spirit that causes a lot of problems is really the spirit of anger the spirit of anger has broken up more marriage than you could shake a stick at and it is it is where it is uh to the place where the one of the partners feel afraid to talk to you they can't talk to you they can't say what they want to say they feel uh oppressed or repressed or whatever the case may be now, i'm not saying they must always say everything on your mind that doesn't give you a license to go and just say what you are saying and destroy everything but it also says that at the right time at the right moment you should be able to express yourself if a person is constantly getting angry at you for everything you say, everything you do, it's a problem in the marriage, then you know that you're dealing with something. Chances are you're dealing with a spirit that's infiltrated your marriage somehow. And sometimes things start up innocently. There's a story of how this gentleman just started uh, confiding in this person at work where he works. And they just, you know, talked about mutual stuff, mutual things and mutual problems. It didn't start off where it was intended to be like that. But later on down the line, the woman uh, began to fantasize about the man and she caught feelings. And they end up having a relationship. Uh, and they didn't even know how they got into it. But what, ha what had happened is he began to tell her personal things, personal things about the marriage. And she began to confide in him as well. They were both going through something similar in their marriage. Does he understand how, how, how it works? What the enemy was doing slowly but surely was he was, he was breaking up the marriage. Both of them were confiding in each other and telling each other their problems. So they had a common bond. Now, I'm not... I, listen, uh, as long as you... How you doing, woman of God? Paula? Pastor Paula, God bless you. God bless you. Welcome on. Prophetess, welcome on. God bless you. Now, it doesn't say... It doesn't It doesn't mean you're not going to see attractive people out there. As long as we live, there's always going to be attractive people. You're always going to find someone attractive. Someone always going to have a... Uh, you know, maybe catch a crush on you or have a crush on you or, or you know, they you could tell there's something different. Sometimes you can't tell. That's why God gave you a wife or a husband. The husband could see it when the wife can't see it. The wife could see it when the husband can't see it because, you know, God built you like that to protect the marriage covenant because there are a lot of people that have been assigned by the adversary that don't even know. Amen. And so what they look for is these marriage-breaking spirits. They look for open doors in the marriage. They look for any sign that there's something wrong. Now, like I say, again, um, they cannot get access unless the partner, the husband or the wife, give them access. Why? Because it's a principle. You have to let them in. It's how the vampires operate. It's how demons operate. They have to find an access, a weak point, an open door, a portal, a vortex. And how do you do that? By, by telling them your secrets. By telling them things you shouldn't tell them. By telling them things that is only reserved for you and the wife. It's reserved for pillow talk. Once you've done that, they say, aha, I've got you. You don't know how long they was working on you. You don't know how long they was praying 
uh, uh, for you. Uh, and we talked about how we know of seven women who are praying for the pastor's uh, wife to die. We know that several people were paying for the pastor to die so they could marry his wife. Because God told them that that was their husband. Now, I try to figure out which God told them that or they told them that's their wife. And so they were in list people who are in error to pray these prayers. And so they break up the marriage, they break up the ministry with their evil prayers. And they think that they're praying prayers. It's what I call witchcraft prayers. Those are prayers prayed contrary to the will of God. You don't know who's cursing your life. You don't know who's saying things against you. You don't know who's right under you. You're thinking they for you. You don't even know that they want you to die. They might even be jealous of the ministry you built up. You build this ministry to, to sacrifice, tears, pains, suffering, <laughs> you know, going through attacks. You build up the ministry. Have the ministry going now. Someone comes in, they're under you. It might be an armor bearer, might be an assistant pastor, might be someone in the ministry who is an elder, or whatever the case may be. They're now hoping you die so they can take over the ministry, which you already worked for, which you already built up, what God already blessed you to have. And it's the same thing. A lot of them, uh, they see the way you treat your spouse, they see the way you treat your husband, and the woman might have four kids now, she might have gotten a little plump, you know, she might have even you know, lost some of you know, the, 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 the look she had because of childbearing or whatever the case may be. The man could have put on some weight, you know, he got pudgy, he got a, you know, got that, what they call that mad belly look. <laughs> and you might not even find him attractive, but can I tell you, there's always someone out there that sees your spouse attractive. Why? First of all, because someone wants him, someone has him, someone loves him. And you might be saying, well, that's, that's, just, that's just hubby or that's just wifey. Uh, they, they, you know, they're always there, you know, they cool. And you stop doing the things you used to do before. You stop listening. You stop showing affection. You stop talking. You stop encouraging. And what happened is you begin to leave the door open slowly but surely. The other woman or the strange woman or the other man, whoever it may be. Because we can go into some other realms too. We, we, just, we only lay the foundation. They begin to notice how he's a good father. He's a good provider. He's always there for you. He's a good listener. And they begin to see themselves with that that person. And you're thinking nobody will want him. <laughs> you, you, you're sadly mistaken or her. There's always someone waiting for your uh, spouse or significant other. And I say one of the reasons is simply because you have them. Simply because they, they see this person as valuable. Mind you, they don't know what you went through to get your husband or your wife or what you had to go through. They only see the shine. They only see the glow. They only see... Uh, 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 the flash or they only see the marriage as it is now they didn't know how you labored and fasted and prayed and had to break all kinds of things over the person's life and had to sacrifice and go after these things uh, in the spirit to get your husband or wife to that place or what happened is you pray this person through you pray them through you pray them into the deliverance you pray them into your breakthrough and now someone else is eating of your plate the devil is a liar you've planted all this corn you've uh, done so much and now the enemy wants to come in and takes what you have and the scripture talks about it in, in, in uh, Deuteronomy 28 it talks about how when there's a curse operating you'll plant and not eat you'll get married but another person will have your wife or your husband so this is all symptoms of a curse operating when you can't seem to get uh, into a position where you are married but back to what we we're saying about how there's someone looking at your husband or wife. There was a gentleman that came to do some work at a particular house, and I won't call no names because people don't know who it is. And this person was a contractor. They came, they was getting ready to do uh, some renovations to the bathroom and to, uh, to some of the, uh, the front area. And they, uh, every day they would come in, the guy would uh, go to work and leave his wife there. In the process of time, this contractor began to come on to, uh, the, uh, to the man's wife, constantly telling her, how he, you know, he got her, he making all his money, this money, the one for her, how he will take her places, buy her trips, uh, take her on cruises, uh, and, and begin to ask her how things is in the marriage. Well, the guy did this for a little while, he continued to do this, he continued to do this day in, day, day, in, day out. He continued to, to, you know, to work and bring the woman down. So eventually she told her husband, you know, that um, this man, every time you go out and leave me here for this man to do the work, He's coming on to me, and he's throwing, uh, he's hitting on me, and throwing these, uh, these, you know, these remarks uh, at me, and working on me. So, so the guy said, "Okay, that's no problem. You know, 
what he did, being the, the type of guy he was, he took this guy's photo, took his image, put it on a, a gay <laughs> on a gay site, and gave it his number. <laughs> and say, willing to construct or willing to do construction on you. I know it was, <laughs> he, should, he, he got this flash, but that's what he had to do to protect his marriage, amen? And after that, he never had any problem with the guy. Because he had to literally show this guy, you barking up the wrong tree. There's a there's a situ similar situation every day. This guy coming on to this guy's uh, wife at work, doing the same thing over and over again. You know, really uh, coming on strong and and uh, um, lambasting and, and and you know really just fighting the guy's marriage. <laughs> you know, constantly telling her, you know, what he will do and how he will do it. He's this and he's an excellent lover and he'll do this for her. But he was only playing the game. So one day the wife told him about it after warning this guy for, for I mean for a little while to stop it. So she told the husband. And the husband came to work early one day, followed the guy home and went up to him and tell him no uncertain time, in certain terms, if you don't stop messing with my wife, I will rearrange your face and I will I will literally feed you your teeth. You will eat teeth soup for the rest of your life. <laughs> and so now he said he's never had she said she's never had a problem with him ever again said from that point on every time he sees her he goes the next way <laughs> and he calls her by her marital name so sometimes you have to literally go up above and beyond when the person don't get the memo or they don't understand leave the marriage circle alone leave the marriage alone because this is not you this is not for you and so you've got to say listen i'm at a place where i'm fed up with you i've literally tried to come at you uh we're just hoping you get the message and you'll back off, but now you seem to keep doing it. You obviously don't understand that, uh, praise God, Nicole, you don't understand that there's something called sacred covenants, there's something called a marriage between a man and a woman, go get your own, but they don't understand that maybe their mother or father didn't teach them about covenants and about respecting people's things and rights and and uh, you know, have getting your own. The Bible says you must drink from your own cistern and drink from your own well. Why is it talking about that? The Bible makes so much uh, statements about marriage because it knows that it's going to be a lot of tests for people. And like I said again, there are some people that they don't want to see uh, uh, the marriage work anyhow. They go after the marriage anyhow simply because they don't like the person. I had people say, "You think you all that? I can show you that's who I is. I can take your man or I can take your woman from you." And why would they do that? That's because they're being used by uh, the adversary. And some people, they have no uh, they have no desire to go after a single man. I remember when I was single, this lady said, Peter, you're single, but I, you're a good-looking man. and uh, But I can't see you. I can't see you and I can't be with you. Because I have to have me a married man. I just don't know why. i always been like that from the time I was a small. I always love older married men. And you don't fit that criteria because you're single i have to have the mind because i have my guy and when i ready i tell them go and they have to go and you can't do nothing about it <laughs> and you have to take care of my bills you have to buy all my trips you have to pay my mortgage off i don't care what happens to your children i don't care what what happens to uh, uh, the marriage as long as I know I'm being taken care of and you just happen to the wife just happened to be in the way I just know that's what I want and I want to have what I want when I want it amen that's because they don't understand the concept of covenants and they are they are brazen they are shameless and they are home wreckers we talked about the home wreckers anointing um, how there are certain people that are anointed to come and fight your marriage they've been assigned to fight your marriage they're assigned to fight your life they're assigned to, to, to wreck your home and some of them are shameless amen and women will talk about it I know I'm in love with a married man and I know it isn't right but I can't help how I feel about him I don't know why I'm feeling like this and my friends and family tell me I need to get out of this relationship with him but I can't get out of this relationship with this married man what I want to tell you uh, whoever you are you need to because you are in violation of covenants, you're messing up people's home, you're destroying a marriage. If you are that person, you need to submit yourself unto God. You need to come out of the situation right quick because you are in danger of being destroyed. Now I, I won't I won't uh, I won't lie to you. Some men tell tell the woman a song and dance, I'm going through problems with my wife right now, I'm getting ready to divorce her, 
I, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you the last time that we were intimate. I, you know, I, I sleep in another room. I get ready to leave her, and they tell the person that, and they get ready to divorce her. Yet it's 15 years later, they still telling you the same song. They've not left the, they've not left their wife yet. So they got you, plus they got uh, the wife, and they playing both of y'all, amen. So who's losing? The man is losing because he got his wife home. She probably don't know. She probably clueless. So if she do know, uh, you know, it's like she's just probably where I, I don't really care anymore. Just take it home or whatever the case may be. And the other woman out there got you like I mean the the man got you like this, and the other woman you just you just a cap woman. So so people know about this, and 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 they know they were being lied to. Now what about when you find out he was lying or she was lying, and and you still continue on in it, and you still continue on in it. Many people have lost their lives, as we talked about it in in uh in um. In Proverbs 5, amen? 5, verse 3, 223. Let's look at that. Let's look at some things. I think we could try to get to some of this. Let's pick it up from... Let's pick it up from 11, verse 11. Okay, let's go to 9. Uh, 8. Remove thy ways far from... We're talking about a strange woman. Proverbs... 5, uh, beginning at verse 3 to 23. Um, Least thou give thine honor unto others, remove thy ways far from her, and come not nigh the door of a house. In other words, the strange woman, the strange man, the strange family, even some of your family members, because of the marriage, you have to stay away from them. <laughs> that might sound strange, eh? And you might say, Prophet Peter, what you talking about? I'm saying that sometimes every time you go around your family members, they have something to say about your husband or your wife or they find some reason to pick on them or to pull them down or when you come around in such a negative atmosphere that you go home and you argue with your husband or the, your wife for no reason and so what happened is we had to tell several people I said I want you to time every time your wife or husband goes around their family member what happens and sure enough they found out what was happening and recently we found out that this guy was married and, and uh, someone who in the ministry uh, told them to so listen your husband been married before, but yet he have all his wife pictures up here. All his wife pictures are up. She need to take he need to take them down and get rid of them because there's turmoil in the house. I mean, complete chaos, complete uh, pandemonium was the order of the day. And she from which listen to our teaching, uh, uh, the member was able to tell her what to do. And she went home and she got rid of all his pictures. And she came back to her weekly and say, said, "Woman of God, I can't believe it's like night and day, not a day." goes by this man don't tell me how much he appreciate me there's peace in the home there's no more arguments there's no fighting one time he used to complain about everything now it's so much peace so much peace because he removed the thing and we talked about this how there's attachment to things attachment to old things some people still have things that their old ex gave them 20 years ago when they took into the marriage old lockets old chains old pictures old mementos and souvenirs and sentimental things old letters that they wrote to them you and I together forever you will never leave me. I will never leave you. You will never give over me. We're going to be one. And you can't find anyone like me. And you got those letters right there. <laughs> what are you doing? You got all the clothes they bought you. They bought me the shirt. And that's when we was really in love. We used to dress together. We used to dress together forever. One on one. We used to buy the same ice cream, same tennis, same shirt together. And yet he still leave you. <laughs> yet he still got married to someone else. Yet you still have all his shirt, all the stuff he gave you. All the things that, that uh, connected you guys act as a point of contact for him to come in there. There's a lady whose husband died and he was such a good provider. He was such a good husband. And so she began to cry and she began to throw herself on the coffin. She began to say, you know, why you do this? Why you do this? Why you leave me? Who can provide for us? Who can provide for the children? Why, 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 why? And eventually what happened is the husband came at nighttime to comfort her in the bedroom at nighttime. And eventually he began to lay with her because she was being comforted by it. And eventually what happened is the man began to sodomize her and begin to beat her and begin to punish her and begin to torment her until she recognized that it was not the, her husband because her husband was already gone. The Bible says at the point that the man wants to die, but after the judgment. So it wasn't him. It was a familiar spirit. Because of her grief, because of her trauma, because of the sudden death of her husband, she called this thing into her. And the thing now had taken over her life until she had to renounce it. They had to cast it out and they had to destroy uh, anything that she'd given over to it, she had to get rid of all the pictures, all the obituary, everything to start life all over again because of her grief. She called out this thing, the thing heard it, the thing began to pretend to be a husband, and that's why we talk about familiar spirits. 
Amen. Familiar spirits operate closely with the strange woman and strange man because they want to get you out of your marriage. If you're not married, they want to keep you unmarried. <laughs> if you're not married, they want to keep you unmarried. They want to keep you being single and not getting married, but they want to keep you messing around. They want to keep you uh, sleeping around. And we talked about it. If you don't have the gift of gab, you don't have, I'm sorry, if you don't have the spirit of uh, 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 celibacy, if God has given you a gift, sorry, <laughs> of celibacy, then you need to get married, amen? So it'll make you want to stay single. you just single all the days of your life, and you, you, you're cool with that. That's something wrong, something fighting you. It's a spirit that wants to keep you like that, amen? So you need deliverance. You need to get deep deliverance. Like I say, we're having a service on Saturday coming up at 2 p.m. at the FNM headquarters. We want you to show up. We're going to be doing a Thanksgiving and a testimony time. We're going to minister as well. Uh, we're going to have um, a time of prayer and celebration and giving God glory and thanks. And we're going to just express our gratitude for keeping us and preserving us. Amen. Because if you did, that means that God didn't, uh, God didn't allow the enemy to have you. So we want to also pray on these things. Amen. We want to give God glory. We want to give God thanks. A lot of times the reason why uh, we're, not where, we're not any further is because we are, we are grateful for the simple things. You're grateful for God bless you with a spouse. When you were single, nobody wanted you. God bless you with a spouse. Now you're abusing the spouse. Now you're taking the spouse lightly. Now you're just treating it all kinds of ways. And you wonder why the strange woman who can tell him nice things, <laughs> who, can, who, can, who, can, who can be there to lift him up. And that's another thing. You begin to speak negatively into your husband's life or wife's life and continue to pull them down. And then the person who looks at them and sees them like, man, that's such a good man or good woman. I wonder why they treat them like this. Man, if I, if I had you, that'll never be like that. And they begin to what? They begin to speak to the king in you. Your wife should be speaking to the king in you. Your husband should be speaking to the queen in you. Why would you let someone else speak to the king in you? They tell you, man, listen, if, man, you could do this, man. I know you're coming out of this. I know you're just going through a rough spot now. I can see you getting out of this. You're such a talented person. You know, this is just a, this is just a temporary setback. You know, you're going to make it. You're going to get over this. I see some things that God is going to get ready to do for you. You know, I, I, I just see your talent, man. I just see you so, uh, so gifted in so many areas. You know, don't worry about this. You know, uh, this too shall pass. And, you know, hey, you want to get something to eat? You want to go, you know, and that's how it starts, you know. And, and a lot of them women, they, they're so shameless, and a lot of men, they're so shameless, you know, well, let's get a quick bite, let's buy you some food. And that's an open door right there. From that time, they buy you the food, or they buy you the drink, or whatever the case may be. Or they say, hey, listen, you okay? And you're feeling down, you might be really be going through something, and you talk to them, and they begin to send you these things. Now, all of a sudden, you guys trading stuff on, on Facebook, or you met, you private inboxing each other. And you might say, that's just innocent, we just encouraging me, he encouraging me, he sending me texts, he sending me this, and he just encouraging me. And I might start off like that, but eventually you begin to develop manners. And I, I think it, but this person wants to think about my wife or my husband. And, and if you don't, if you're not spiritual and you you're not in the realms uh, where you're supposed to be, and you're vulnerable, that's how you get caught. And that's how a lot of strange women take men. <laughs> they take them because they were they were not being validated, celebrated. They were not being lifted up. They're not having the respect. Amen. Women need love. Men need respect. Amen. Women need affection. Men need respect. R E S P C T. L-O-V-E. Everybody has their own love language. Some people speak to show their love in different ways. They may not always tell you they love you every day, but every day they bring you lunch. Every day they make sure that you know um, you, you get a breakfast or meal. Every day they come and pick you up when you need. Uh, if you need something, they go get it. Whatever it is, it, they're there for you. They're always there for you. They're praying you through. They may not have all the money in the world, but they're there for you because you recognize there are some people, they have a marriage um, that's made in hell. They have all the money they want. They are financially set. They are financially fit. They got money. They got they got prestige. They got honor. They live in a life of of uh, favor uh, or disfavor, whatever you want to call it. They, uh, let's put it this way: according to the world standard, they are super successful. But every day, they are out there trying to kill one another. They're cheating on one another. They they are fighting one another. Amen. And that's that's what I call the marriage breaking spirit. Yet they, you don't have the big home, you don't have the fancy place, but yet there's love in your house. When you go home, there's peace in the house. There's nothing more discouraging and more uh, damaging when a person goes home and they have to fight. You're fighting outside, then you're fighting inside. When you come home, where you're supposed to have, you're supposed to have rest, rest, relaxation, joy. Uh, your wife's supposed to build you up. Your husband's supposed to validate you and, and share things. You know, am I saying it's going to be perfect? No. Am I saying your wife or husband is going to miss it? 
Yes, because we're in this flesh and we still get to know one another. You still bring, you brought your stuff with you. I brought my stuff with me. And so we, God said, come together now. We're supposed to act as sandpaper on each other. You're supposed to crush some of that stuff of me. I'm supposed to scrape a lot of that stuff of you. And so that's what it does. It begins to bring one another together. If you don't understand each other's love language, you'll miss it. Your husband or wife could be telling you they love you in a lot of different ways. Some people are more overt with it. They may come and kiss you a million times and tell you, hey, you're special, I can kiss upon you, I touch you, I'm affectionate. The other person might not be like that, but he might be, uh, or she might be the way uh, uh, they just, you know, they just come and write you a letter, or they want to spend time with you watching the movie, or they want to cook you your favorite meal. You got to begin to say, you know, God, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to speak to the king and my husband. I'm going to speak to the queen and my husband, because if you do not, someone else will. Like I said, you can't stop a bird from flying, but you can stop him from building a nest in your house or pooping on your head, as I, as I like to say. <laughs> you can stop him from pooping in your head because there are always going to be attractions. There are always going to be people that like you. There are always going to be people who will crush on you. Married, single, or divorced, they're still going to find you attractive and vice versa. Now, now the point is where you allow them to go. Any that you sometimes you don't trust your wife or husband, you don't trust the other person out there because you know the nature of what they're into. You know how they play the game and sometimes you recognize some of the same moves you made on your husband and your wife that some man or woman trying to put on your husband or wife you recognize that some of the moves you put on them to get him <laughs> so game recognize game and 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 uh, you are to protect your house amen and so you don't want to create an atmosphere of tension one of the things that men hate is nagging complaining constantly fussing constantly fighting uh that drives them away women they love to see men uh showing affection getting stuff done around the house, uh, uh, you know, being the priest of the home, praying them through, you know, being the one to initiate Bible study, to initiate, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, certain spiritual qualities, getting stuff fixed around the house, whatever the case may be. Amen? So you got to bring a balance there because you can't do it all the time for, you know, but you got to bring a, a balance there because there's always someone who looks better, who smells better, who, who got a better shape, got a better body, <laughs> You can always see that because it got to be more than that. Amen? Because eventually, when you get to that state where this could be you and her, it could be where, do we enjoy being around each other? Some people love each other, but they don't like each other. <laughs> they can't stand being one another. It's only physical. You know, once they have the physical um, uh, interaction or whatever it could be, they, they can't stand one another. You know, it's not that. It's God trying to build something. And he's trying to build something sacred, something special. He's trying to build something where you're there for them. They're there for you. You know each other. They they know you. You know them. You, you, you made a covenant. You stand for them for better or for worse. That's why the vow says for better or for worse. But people now have got to the place where the minute it gets a little worse, they're gone. It's a, I, said, I didn't say stick around for worse. I only say for better, better, better. Sometimes you got to do things that you might not want to do. You might have to change your husband's purpose. Uh, he might get sick, can't do nothing for himself. You might have to change him. You might have to change her. That's part of the covenant. How many people could stick around? You think the sweet eye could stick around and do that? She's only there for a good time. You think this, the, uh, the, the strange man could stick around? I call him a man whore. <laughs> or a gigolo. <laughs> you think they could stick around? No. They're there for a good time. And you think you can, they, they, they can stick around when it's time and they're really going through when the wife or husband's sick and they're going through stuff that's training it could be where the finances being challenged or this happening no because they don't recognize the power of the covenant amen the covenant is unbreakable really it's unbreakable and the only way to get out of it is through death and i say you must go kill the person or try to kill them through you know putting stuff in their food or doing stuff no i'm not talking about that because god sees you can fool man but you cannot fool god now you know you're in trouble when you're praying for your spouse to die <laughs> or vice versa or hoping that they die because there's so much tension and problems and there's no peace. That means that there's another spirit operating. You gotta repent, you gotta uh, fall on your face and say, God, you gotta make this right. And instead of you arguing with your spouse, you need to say, God, fix them. Anytime there's a problem, you need to say, God, fix that person. God, fix this woman. You give me this man, you give me this woman, fix them. Because I'm about to do something I don't wanna do. And I'm, I'm really up to, up to here. And instead of you doing what uh, you you know what you thought in your mind to do, you said, God, I give them over to you. I'm going to commit them to you. I'm going to just let you handle this. Because a lot of times we didn't have good examples of our forefathers or our mothers or fathers 
showing love to each other. And I bless God for those that show love to each other in the marriage so the children can see it, so they can have something to, uh, t you know, to uh, a template. They can have a pattern to live by so when they see it, they can recognize it. Uh, you know, but most of the times we come from dysfunctional family. Most of the time we saw multiple women or multiple men in our mother and father's life. Most of the time they were, we were uh, the product of a divorced life. You think this all just happened overnight? No, this was designed by an intelligent being that wants you to experience all these things so you can perpetuate the cycle, amen, of the marriage-breaking spirit. The marriage-breaking spirit will come into your husband's life or wife's life and they will steal them right under you. And how will they steal them from you? They will steal them with smooth words. They will steal them with comforting words. They will steal them with, 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 with smooth sayings and they will validate them and they will speak into the king they are. Amen? Now, it's an illegal thing they're doing, but they're doing it because it's based on a principle. You must begin to honor your husband and honor your wife. You must begin to speak into them uh, in their lives. Now, I'm going to say, you um, is it going to be all day, every day? No. No, not all the time. But you've got to recognize them for who they are. God gave them to you uh, for a reason. Amen? And most of the time, God put people together. Listen to me very well. If you hear anything I say, listen to this. God puts you together for you to be in ministry. Did you get that? God puts you together for you to be in ministry to Him. For you to go into ministry. God put a man and a wife together mostly for them to go into ministry or to be in ministry for him. So the enemy knowing this, knowing that, doesn't want to see you move in ministry. He doesn't want to see you move in the things of God. Amen? And so he will fight this to nail. Now, again, we talked about the sweethearting spirit. This, this is very prevalent in the Bahamas. And if you don't have a sweetheart in the Bahamas, they look at you like you're crazy. So they have a group of guys that all they do is they hang out all the time. And they figure out ways how to, uh, how to be smarter and trickier with the sweethearting. Amen? It's a spirit. And they have a club. And the club is mutually exclusive. You have to have a sweetheart or more than one. Do you know that there are some men that are paying uh, multiple rents, multiple mortgages? They're paying multiple rent, multiple mortgages for several different women at any given time what do you think they're doing to their family and the children are home and they don't have enough to eat some of them do take care of their home first they do take care of home first and they do take care of everything first and then they take care of their other five sweethearts or their other five women and what happens is they uh don't know that they're fostering a a a spirit because their son is watching the son is observing your daughter is observing what you're doing. And they feel like if daddy is doing this, because remember now, the first thing they see that is God-like, because father means source. It literally means they're earthly God. You see your dad, mom, as a type of God. You see them as God. You see them as God. And so you will begin to understand that that uh, this, is, this is what you're witnessing. So they perpetuate the cycle. So what the enemy is doing is he's creating a dysfunctional, messed up uh, family that that a person, individual that goes and have a family, and they are messed up, and they can't they can't seem to they can't seem to uh, get their life together. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm online. Um, someone is calling me online. I'm online. Please don't do that because what you're doing you're messing up with the online um, live. Please don't. Uh, do that. Call me afterwards or, or or whatever. Yeah, so what you see is you see that the spirit is fighting your life. It's fighting your life. It's fighting your mind. Hold on a second. Uh, huh? Yeah. Can you call that number? Cool. Call that number. Excuse me a second, guys. Ah. Uh, Give me a second. Yeah. So, excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Um, so, we see that the enemy will fight you. Succubus, incubus, they are notorious at doing that. They are notorious at fighting your marriage. They are notorious at even stopping you from uh, opening up your life. There are some people, they don't even know they're being used. They will, they, will, they will come into your life. They will sleep with you. And 
your husband has been sleeping with me for the last couple of years and I want to let you know. Some people do that just to break up your marriage or they will begin to get problem. Uh, sorry, they'll begin to extort you and blackmail you so they can keep getting money out of you. That's a scam they do now. They sleep with a married man, then they threaten to tell his wife if he don't buy them trips, cars, boats, planes, whatever they need, <laughs> jewelry, pay for their bills, give them the lifestyle that they want to end. But the Bible says, for this cause, shall a man, Genesis, uh, uh, and Genesis says, for this, this is 2 and 24, it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Again, this is in Ephesians, it's in Mark, uh, it's in also in Matthew as well. Uh, so, you have become one flesh with that spirit that's messing with you. If you're messing or a spirit is sleeping with you, it has become one with you. It knows the power of agreement. It knows the power of covenant. So that's why a lot of people, they can't never seem to move forward. Or if they are married, they find out they get angry with, your, with their spouse, with their significant other for no reason. Do you find out that you're getting mad or angry with your spouse for no reason? Do you find that you're getting angry for no reason or you just hate them? Do you feel good about your spouse when they are outside the house and you loving up on them? But the minute they come home, it's a problem. The minute you come home, you begin to fight like cats and dogs. So you might have and have joined yourself with a spirit spouse. Or they might been uh, they might have been affected with a spiritual spouse as well. Amen. And so uh, we want to look and explore this some more. If you find that you can't stop being carnal, you don't know why. I just have a problem with my flesh. I don't seem to get rid of it. Uh, God, every time I get in a relationship, I end up being the one to sabotage the relationship. I end up being the one to sabotage the relationship. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Are you guys on? Thank you, Jesus. If you've been experiencing uh, any one of the symptoms, you can't stop complaining, even though your husband is telling you to stop complaining. Or your wife been telling you to stop doing this particular thing. I don't like you doing this. And yep, it's, um, it's, it's messing with me. I can't stop it. I, I don't know why. I'll get to a certain point in a relationship. And then when I get to being serious with the person I end the relationship or I figured a way how to destroy it I figured a way how to mess it up I figured out a way how to get out of the relationship because I'm get, they're getting too close to me we're about to get married can I tell you that's not always you yes you might have cold feet yes you might have uh, you might have um, some tendencies that you say you know I, I, I'm commitment phobe <laughs> or as I call it the Peter Pan syndrome and that's a whole other topic for another day the Peter Pan syndrome is really uh, a demonic spirit that wants to keep you never committing, always uh, in that, 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 that phase where you just can't seem to never grow up. You just can't seem to grow up. You ever been a person, they look right, they smell right, they got all the potential, but they are childish or they're connected to their mother. Have you been involved with a mother's boy, a mommy's boy, and his mother could, she could buck her toe 300 miles away and he running over there to, to deal with her. Uh, she has them totally wrapped around her finger. Or, or or even the or even the women, their mother has them so controlled they can't even get to you. Uh, and you are last, but but you are the last person they ever consult. They consult their mother before they consult you. They consult their dad before they consult you. They 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 treat you like you just a third wheel or a spare wheel, you know. Or or any decision that's being made, they let their mothers or grandmother make it for them. Can I tell you that you are in a marriage with the, all of them? That means that there's no separation. That means that there's a spirit operating and they've not cut the umbilical cord. Do you know how hard it is for you to be with a person who is so caught up in their family members and their mother and father uh, that they can't, even, uh, uh, they can't even treat you the way you need to be treated because they have to first talk to mommy about it or daddy about it? And it's not where they're getting good advice, they're getting bad advice. And the minute you have an argument, the dad come get all the stuff, or the mother come get all the stuff, and pack up the stuff. The minute there's an argument, you leave and go right back home. You know, the, the, the best thing that a mother or father could do is say, listen, don't come around here. Go back to your husband and work it out. 
if he ain't beating you, if he ain't choking you, if he ain't, if he have, um, if he ain't, you know, doing any one of those extreme things to you and you just had a little dispute and you have, you got to go work it out. We can't keep you here building you up with this. You need to work, uh, work your marriage. Some people, they don't want to face reality because they've been a mama's boy and a papa's, a papa's girl for too long. They can't, they can't even uh, handle when things get a little tough. They can't even uh, stick it out, amen? So they fight, they fight, they fight, they fight. Then they'll turn around and the whole family will gang up on you. The whole family will gang up on you. And if you had children with them or if there's a child involved, have you ever been in a relationship where the child is involved and some, for some reason things didn't work out or it's a temporary state and they, they are fighting you to the children? Uh, they don't want you to see a child. It's, you have, it's hard to get visiting rights or, the, or, the, or, the, or they tell the child so much nasty stuff about you that by the time the child does come around you, the child is, is so messed up in his mind that he, 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 he questions who you are or they poison the child's mind or, or they make the child hate you for no reason and they develop this pattern. There are many wives and many husbands who do this to the children. They make the children feel uh, uh, their pain. They burden the children with their, their own things and sometimes the other woman or other man is the child in, in, in the relationship. Do you, do you get me? The strange woman or strange man is the child. You must consult your child on everything that's going on in your marriage. You must consult your daughter or your son on everything that's going on in the marriage. No child should have that responsibility. I don't care how old they are, they should not have that responsibility. You know, once they've grown up and matured, that's different. Uh, but you should not put that burden on them. Many children can't seem to get married because their mother has married them or their dad has married them because they dump on them and they put all the stuff on a child who's only 11 or 10. Do you know what it's doing to them? And so, by reason of emotional connection, they've connected themselves with that child and put that stuff on a child. And now the child has a messed up view of what marriage is and they are fulfilling a role that they should not have because they're not at that uh, emotional state or that maturity state for them to deal with that. So they take on the responsibility of being a husband, a surrogate husband or a surrogate wife to their 50-year-old, 40-year-old, 30-year-old, whatever the age may be husband and wife and so they begin to tell them everything they consult them confide in them this is not right you need to not do that to the child the child might seem mature they may seem grown up they might even give you good advice but that's not what you should do because what you're doing is later on is going to manifest in a different way sometimes they end up hating women or hating men sometimes they cause them to uh, uh to end up being so extreme they go to become serial killers they hate women because they saw how their mother treated the father, or they saw how the how uh, they had a low opinion of women because they saw how uh, the father was cheating on the, the mother for so long, so they feel that all women are sluts, or all women are no good. And so they go on to begin to kill these women, and, and most time when they profile these serial killers, they would have found um, that that's where the problem began. It began in infancy. It began in infancy, and it began where sometimes they feel so ashamed of what they've been through or how the person made them feel uh, uh, um, however the case may be by taking them too deep in these things even sometimes sexual molestation it got really weird <laughs> and, and we know of a situation um, and I told you about the story how the, where the son got the mother pregnant and, and it was so strange they couldn't talk about it and now they had the baby <laughs> so how do you, t how do you, what do you tell well, how do you, what do you tell a child <laughs> how do you tell a child yeah. Your brother is your daddy, but your daddy don't know. <laughs> That's a mixed up situation. And we have a song, your mommy is your mommy, but your mommy don't know. Your daddy is your daddy, but your daddy don't know. It speaks of the situation that's going on. What about when the, the, the brother gets his sister pregnant, or the, or, or the father gets his daughter pregnant, or the cousins get one another pregnant, or the uncle get the niece pregnant, or whatever the case may be. You see how, how mixed up that could be and how that could mess with the mind? We know a situation where the uncle got... Uh, the wife, uh, his niece, pregnant, and it was such an embarrassment that they couldn't tell. They couldn't tell the um, the, the family members about it. But everybody knew anyhow. People, they know. They talk about it. So the child uh, came he came into the world, and the woman never one day told the child she loved him. And I I remember being present when they was arguing, 
and and she said he said you know the reason why i act out and do these things i do the reason why you always get me to jail and i always go to the season you never love me you think i don't know you don't think i don't know you had me for uncle so and so and you shame about it and that's why you had to leave where you was and go to another island and that's why you treat me like this and you love all these other children you treat them so good but i always a problem there's always something you always find fault with me you always pick on me you always do this on me and you always make me feel I'm not loved. And that's why I do the things I do. That's why I rob the house and steal from you. And I always end up in jail and always doing something because I, 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 because I know you don't love me. And I remember hearing that and I was blown away by, by that revelation. And I was a young guy at the time. But I remember him saying that, you know, we, we were about the same age. And incidentally, what happened is this guy ended up on drugs to a great degree. And he never really, he never really came back uh, to never really got a whole a grip on it i was tried i tried to be there for him i tried to get him sorted out but it's like he could never get over the fact that he was conceived out of wedlock he was conceived by his uncle and it was a big shame and eventually what happened is he ended up dying uh sadly you know um you know almost taking his life he took his life in a way um because of what happened but it was embarrassing amen it was embarrassing and a lot of that is going on and if that's you i want to tell you there's forgiveness at the cross that God has accepted you no matter how it happened. No matter how it happened, you're still loved, amen. You're still loved by God. You didn't come, in, to come here by chance. You are loved by God. Don't let the enemy play with your mind. Don't let the enemy make you feel you're not worth it. Even though they might have treated you like a stepchild uh, and not loved you one day, not told you your love, not validated you, or not give you the affection and the attention that you needed for maturity. And so you end up coming back to them and tormenting them because that's the only way you could have gotten affection. That's why you were doing all the stuff you were doing. If that's you, I want to tell you there's forgiveness at the cross, that God loves you unconditionally, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that you're special. You are special to the Lord and the Lord loves you, amen? And that, 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 is, that is under the cross, that is under the cross, that is under the cross, that is under the cross. If your grandmother tell you, uh, told you those evil things, if your grandfather told you that, if your mother even told you that, if your father told you that, it's, they're wrong for that, amen? Uh, and God, he, he says, when mother and father forsake you, I will take you up, amen? When they even acting weird and funny, God said, I'll still love you and I'll still accept you into the beloved, amen? And so I want to let you know if you've been through anything like a similar, where you, you've not been validated or celebrated by your mother, where your mother can't stand you or she made you feel less than you were or always took pleasure in the other children, always gave them the best and gave you the leftovers, uh, never never giving you the care you love, always, you know, raining on her. Maybe you weren't as pretty. Maybe you weren't the one who came the right way and she saw you as a shame. And so she might have even given you away. Uh, recently, there was a story um, that was on um, that was on TV. It talked about this guy, how his mother uh, gave him away. She never told him she loved him and couldn't. When he tried to give her affection, she said, I can't handle you. She gave him away at an early age, and he ended up being in a foster home. He ended up going through all kinds of stuff. And I think they, they raped him in a foster home and did all kinds of stuff to him. She did the same thing to his brother uh, because she found, out, she found out that the man who she had a child for was married. But that was the first time, so she was angry with him for the first time. But then the second time, she already knew. So this, after that, she couldn't take it no more. She said, you look too much like your dad. You look too much like your dad. And she gave the child away. Do you know what that did to that child? Do you know what that did to the child's spirit? Do you know how that damaged the child? Only God could have brought him to that point to, to bring true forgiveness to his parents, his mother, and to love up on her and love up and love her than, like never before. Amen? So God healed him in those, those parts. He turned out really well. He got his master's. He got his, um, he got his double major in another thing. He was in the army for a season. He is now a pastor. He is floating the things of God. When your mother and father forsake you, when they throw you away, God will pick you back up and make your life something beautiful, something wonderful. And that happened to this woman too. She did the same thing. She had her children. She took the first child and she gave the first child away. She put the first child in a paper bag on somebody's doorstep. She went with this man again, had the same child, had a, sorry, had a different child, took this child and took it to another doorstep. She did the same thing again. She had a child again and took the child and put it on somebody else's uh, doorstep. She did this three times, amen, and and came to find out there was a mystery, a mystery uh, of who is your mother and father. So as the children got older, they were different, living in different counties and in different towns. What happened is they began to look for their mother, and so they did a DNA search, and they did a, a historical search from Ancestry.com or some, something similar, and they found out that they was connected to the situation, and they said, oh, 
your aunt we we have a we have a dna match we we had a dna match of your aunt so we want to connect you with your aunt so they went to their aunt and the aunt was so loving on them and she was so excited about seeing them and she was so loved up on them she said you know i miss you guys i'm so happy how you guys turned out because you know the, the all the kids ended up in foster care but they turned out so well they end up doing really well in life and they end up having families of their own who are in a legitimate legal marriage that they that you know they would just love it on the children so eventually what happens they kept digging closer and closer and closer and the, what happened is the three children connected eventually even though they're living in different countries or different countries they end up connecting and they all had a reunion and guess what the only person that was able to connect them was the was the was the auntie mighty god are you guys getting this so they went to the auntie and they were all rejoicing and they found out that the auntie ended up having a heart attack and the auntie only had like a couple months to live well, it turns out they did some more investigation and they begin to look even deeper and, and, and they look further. And all this time, while they were having this reunion, the woman watching the story come together over a period of five years, they were coming together, they were coming together, they were meeting each other and connecting. The auntie was right there and the auntie was saying she don't know where the mother is and, and uh, the mother, uh, who's her sister, she don't know, she's not seen her for a little while. They don't know where she's gone and, and so forth and so on. So what happened is uh, eventually there was a big secret that they found out after they did the DNA test, they found out that the the one who was telling them that the mother died and passed on was their mother. The, the auntie that they thought was their auntie was really their mother. And they found out because of DNA. See, you could get away with stuff before, but now because of the advances in, in technology and science, science is not all bad, you know, when it's used for good beings. They found out that the woman was lying to them all this time, lying to them on TV, Lied to them and she went to the hospital every day to say she found them. They even put her on the paper and said, Good Samaritan finds children and dump and, and, and delivers them to the hospital. And she got a write up and she got TV interviews uh, 20, 25 years ago. And here is the same woman, is their mother. And that's why she had the heart attack because she watched them come together and meet each other, even though she, even though they were given in separate countries and different fa families. They came together. When she saw them come together, she had a heart attack because she knew that she was going to be exposed. She knew that she had to come clean to them. And they did an interview with her uh, on TV about her and about her uh, her life. And she had to say, listen, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do this to you guys, but I was financially not capable of doing it. I had four kids besides you guys. I kept having children for married men that were already in a relationship they didn't want to take responsibility for what was happening so i couldn't take uh, i couldn't keep you guys i didn't go to the hospital i had you in the bathroom in warm water and i cut the umbilical cord and i took you and put you to somebody's house and i knew that once you started crying they would come out and take you then i had it again two years later uh same thing in the bathroom i had the, i had the, the next child i cut the umbilical cord I took them to a house, put them in a paper bag, and rang the doorbell and ran off on my bicycle and did the same thing. Again, this happened with another man. I had a child again and within the space of two years. I couldn't take any child. I couldn't, I didn't know why I wasn't on birth control pills or whatever the case may be, but I always thought that if I had a child for the man, that would keep the man. And it didn't work out like that. And so I did the thing again. And I make sure you guys are space so you will never find each other, but I was watching over your life for a long period of time. There's a saying, saints, that pig to turn hog. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are beloved and you are loved. Like I said, if you guys ever watch my story, you'll know I share a similar story. I had a brother who I didn't know about till about 37 years ago. I, I, I never saw him after that. I saw him once and never met him again. We thought he was gone. We thought he'd move away to another country. And the people who adopted him or took him, they then turned around and changed his name and changed his passport, uh, changed his his, uh, his uh, birth certificate and birth papers and they didn't tell him about it. What happened is when they died, there was a big ruckus because the real birth children was angry. They took the will, they took it all from my biological brother and told him, you're not really our, you're not really our brother. You're not really our real brother. And, and he found, whilst he's looking through their stuff, he found a, a, a birth certificate and papers and he went on national television and was asking for his mother, asking for his family, asking for his brothers and sisters on on Zedness they did a live and I happened to be watching Zedness at the time and 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 I called into the station and said this is none other than my brother I know where his family is tell him we're here we've been looking for him all our lives and they were so 
um, they were so thrilled that the 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 ZNS said, you know, we're gonna underwrite this, we're gonna pay for everything, we're gonna pay for this trip, we want to do this reunion because you know we're gonna do this as a human interest story, and we met our brother for the first time in like 37 years. There are some people don't understand that there are parts of your life that you felt missing. There are parts that felt you know like, hey, I'm never gonna get it together. Can I tell you, God is the one who did that. God brought them together at the right time, and it had, I had to be in the right place watching that. Uh, I was trying to turn the channel, but the individual said, no, put it back here. you got to watch the news. They didn't even know what's going on. I said, I keep trying to change the channel. They said, no, watch the news. That was God. <laughs> that was God <laughs> bringing me to that place where I was going to find my brother. And I found my brother, and he found his mother, and we put the story on. We, I think I tried to upload it on YouTube, it, I mean Facebook. It didn't come out so clear. But we did it, and we had a reunion, and we cried, we laughed, we we had uh, we had great joy. But here's what his story was after after all was said and done. He was like, "Why didn't you want me, mommy? Why did you give me away? Why did you give Peter away, or his sister away, or or why did you just not give us all away? Why you kept them and gave me away?" And that was his cry, and that is a real thing. People want to know why you didn't love me, why you didn't keep me, why you did what you did to me, why did you give me up for adoption, why did you leave me at these people's doorstep, why do you treat me like a stepchild, why do you allow my dad to rape me every night, why do you let my stepdad to rape me every night because he pays the bills and he keeps the light on, why do you turn a blind eye and try to hide that and beat me? me feel crazy for me coming to you telling you this mommy why did you allow this to happen to me why did you not keep me why did you fight for me why didn't you do this for me and show me that you love me mommy or daddy why 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 and that is a very valid question the first thing you want to know is that you're loved it could be where the reason why you can't seem to stay in a marriage or get married is because from the time you in the womb, there were things said about you in the womb. You didn't know you noticed, but you picked it up and it was imprinted upon your subconscious. It was imprinted upon your unconscious and your pre-conscious. So now you develop that pattern for not being wanted. So you go to men who use you so you could get validation. So they end up not marrying you. And you end up going through problems and problems and problems. I know of a lady who every time she went with a man, he'd tell her he'd marry her. And then later on the line, he would leave her. And so the last time she got into a man, she had a child for him, and he said he was going to marry her. And he didn't, uh, on the day of their wedding, when, he had, when she had the dress, she had already tell everybody, they had already planned the day. The news came to her that he's getting married to this lady down to this other church. And right then and there, she stood right there in her wedding ground, and she went out of her head. Blood started to come down her nose. She ended up in the party wagon. They took her away in the funny wagon. She ended up in the crazy hill or the insane asylum for about a year not able to cope with herself, not able to do anything, just look at the ceiling because it was such a shock to her system. No doubt in her ancestral line, there was a spirit spouse, there was a marriage-breaking spirit that said, you will come close to getting married, you'll get your wedding dress, you'll get your wedding gown. I will allow men to even come to the place where they even get you the ring, but you will not taste marriage, you will not see marriage, and that was how it happened. Up to this point, the individual has not ever gotten over that situation. They've never ever gotten married, amen? And they're now into their 70s and 80s. That is a spirit because they don't understand the concept of spiritual warfare. They don't understand that you got to re renounce these stuff. you got to go deep in the spiritual warfare to break the, the generational curse of your bloodline. And because you don't understand how this thing works, you don't understand how this weapon is formed, you will continue to perpetuate the cycle. Only when you can begin to stand up in your bloodline another thousand years it'll go on for another thousand years till someone decides to stand up in the bloodline and say it goes no further my child ain't gonna go through this my daughter ain't gonna go through this my son ain't gonna go through this none of my four none of my children that are coming into this world and my future generations are gonna go through this anymore i'm gonna want to take the blows i'm gonna be the one to take the hits i'm gonna be the one to start up and confront the narcissist. Many people are in relationship with people who are very narcissistic. They are self-centered. And they are very good. They, they got you because they had they had the ability to, to give you an Oscar-winning performance. They give you an Oscar-winning, an Academy-winning performance. They trick you. And they acted so good until they got you. And then they change on you. And you thought that they were going to be faithful to you. They're going to love you. And they're going to do this to you. And then they turn around and they throw you out. They throw you out. They beat you. They sleep with 
a lot of your family members, they sleep with a lot of women and you can't seem to leave them and you're in a relationship with them. You're in a marriage with them and it's become a prison door for you. And they, they make you feel that you're not going to go anywhere in life. They, they make you feel that I am your only security. As a matter of fact, they beat you to, to so bad sometimes. They beat you to pop and then they go and they get you gifts. They beat you, buy you gifts. 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 That is not a relationship to, to be in. And if they're not physically doing it, they're beating you emotionally. Because with the physical beating, you can get scars. You can have scars that probably will heal. <laughs> you know, eventually will heal. But the emotional beating, the psychological beating, the abusive beating, the traumatic beating that you've taken cannot be healed so easily because it's not readily discernible. It's really on the inside of you. When your spirit has been broken, when your spirit has been bound, when your spirit has been twisted, when you've been uh, shattered and fragmented in so many different ways, it's hard for you to trust people. It's hard for you to get in a relationship where you trust people. And so what you do is you begin to sabotage the relationship before you get to the next level because you're wondering when this, when this dream will stop. You're wondering when this fairy tale can come up because I've only had, for my frame of reference, bad relationship, bad marriages. But I come to tell you today, your story is about to change. God is getting ready to change your story. God is getting ready to set you free. God is getting ready to lift you up. God is getting ready to give you the marriage that you deserve. Amen? Some people had to fight for years for their marriage. Some people had to go through high hell and hot water for their mate. Amen? And some people are still going through it because they've gotten a promise from God. Many times they pack their bags, but they can't seem to get out. They pack their judgment bundle. They even leave for a season, but God keeps bringing you back to the person. So God is saying to you that there's something else fighting your marriage. It's a marriage-breaking spirit. Sometimes you have a husband who have a wandering eye. His eyes wander. If, if you have your sister come over, he addressing her with his eye. If your cousin come over, he addressing her with his eye. If the, if, if the dog come over, he addressing the dog with his eye. He just have a wandering spirit. And if you check his bloodline, you'll find out that in his bloodline, you'll find out that the daddy was like that. Maybe the daddy has come to the place where he's not doing it anymore because he's gotten a handle of it. He's gotten some deliverance, uh, some measures of it. But you'll find out that the, the men, for the most part, in that line was like that. You'll find out that they can't seem to stay uh, 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 faithful no matter how much they want to, no matter how much they cry blood, no matter how much they stick or, ch or cut themselves, no matter how much they try to tie themselves down. They find that anytime someone comes around, they got the wandering eye. They got the eyes that they got to go after this thing, uh, 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 to chase this thing. And they begin the proposition. I know of a situation where we had to minister to uh, the person because the, the, the niece came to live with uh, this woman, uh, her, her auntie, <coughs> and the husband uh, was proposing every night. And she uh, got to the point where he even he even offered her $1,000 just to see her undress, just to look at her body. He wanted to give her $1,000 just to look at her body. Just to see her address, he was willing to give her a thousand dollars. She went and told, uh, she went and told um, uh, her auntie, and her auntie, being a woman who's wise, said, "I know my husband have a problem." And 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 so, what she had to do, she had to she had to uh, take the niece out of the house, bring the niece out of the house, so there could be some summons. But the husband went on to do it with other people and still doing it, uh, uh, just to just to appease that spirit. Amen. Uh, just to appease that spirit. It's a spirit, and if it is not submitted under the blood of of the lamb is if it's not brought under subjection to the will of God, it'll always be a problem. Look at David. Even up in David old age, David had to have a bride sleep with him. He had to have a young girl sleep with him. He he seventy, eighty, yet he had to have a, a young virgin sleep with him. <laughs> David was a man who was who had a problem with lust. Amen. He had a problem with lust. So did his sons, so did so did his sons, you know, his his son slept with all his concubines. And why did he do that? He do that as a way to get back at him, but there's also <clears throat> there's also spirit operating and, and, and one of um, David's son raped his, uh, his daughter Tamar uh, because why? There was a spirit of lust and a spirit of incest in the family line because of what he did to uh, 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 Bathsheba. Uh, sorry, is it Bathsheba? Is it Bathsheba? Not Bathsheba. Uh, it, yeah, I think it's Bathsheba. What's, what's, what's the name? Bathsheba? The queen of, yeah, Bathsheba. Yeah, it's Bathsheba. And, and the Hittite, you know, uh, he, did it to, he, did it, he did it to him and then he tried to make him he tried to make him feel like, um, you know, it's okay, go sleep with your wife, go do this. And then he gave him his death sentence on the horse. You know, he, and see, this, this guy was a Hittite. I can't remember his name right now. He was a Hittite, but he was very loyal to David. And, and he gave him his marching orders to death. Uh, and he gave it to his head of, the, head of David's guards. And he put him right in front 
of the battle uh, formation in the battle line and pull back and leave him there. He died, amen. And then he was able to marry Bathsheba, Bathsheba, and take his wife. But God saw it and God sent a prophet to confront him, amen, and to tell him, you know, the sword shall never leave your home. The sword shall never leave your house because of what you've done. You will forever be, uh, 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 the sword shall forever be in your house. And we can see it all through his family line. The sword has always been in his family, amen. That's because of him uh, uh, not honoring God and sleeping with a married man's wife amen he brought a curse on his life and david was a man who was uriah thank you very much uriah uh he was a man beloved of god amen david was a man uh, 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 god said there's none like david amen there's none like david there's none like david amen david's man after my own heart i love david but yet david was a man who had not been delivered in some areas <laughs> yet he had an anointing there are many anointed men called of God. That's why you see a lot of men being called of God, but yet they find themselves in problems in that area because that area is not brought under the blood. I know a man, he said, Peter, I love God. And he said, I love God. He said, but every certain amount of time I'll be doing good. But when it come up to like say around November, I find that I have to go out and, and there's a desire pushing me to sleep on my wife. I want to go and sleep on my wife. I want to go and sleep on my wife and there's something pushing me out there. Something pushes me out there. Something pushes me. It pushes me. And I am driven by this thing. I don't want to do it. And yet I am a man of God. I'm a minister of the gospel. And I do well when you see October come around. There are some people that they do well. They don't even have the spirit wife come to them. But when a certain time comes, the spirit spouse comes on them and it drives them out to go out and do strange things. They might have to pick up a prostitute, pick up a man at the bar, pick up a woman at the bar, uh, pick up someone at the bar. They don't even know why they're doing it. There's some people who are in the church, they're pastors, and they're on the down low. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Prophet Spencer, you're in trouble now. He called out the sacred cows. There are some pastors who are on the low down or down low. They have a family, but yet they connect, and they're going with members of the same sex in their church. But because they feel like they're both males and they have a family, it's okay. But there's a word for that, and it's called homosexuality. I don't care how you say you're still a male and this is that, you're still a homosexuality. And so because of that, you've now opened the church up to the same spirit. Some of the biggest churches have that going on uh, right in the church and it's real. And because of this, they don't want to talk about it. There are men who are, who are men who are pastors uh, are going with a lot of the male members in the church because they feel it's not, it's not a sin because they're both men. And they go with each other, and yet they have their family, but they're on the down low. They even have certain codes they give each other, and certain looks, and certain handshakes that they do for each other. And so, even guys are talking. I think this guy, his name is LJ King, or LL King, or whatever. He came out with it many years ago. But it's not new. This has been going on for years. He didn't, he didn't, he's the first one to actually talk about it publicly. But this is something that's going on even now. That's why they don't want to talk about it. That's why a lot of people don't even get invited to come to speak to their conference. <laughs> Or come to speak to their big, uh, uh, their big um, uh, 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 seminars because they're not closet homophobes. They're not closet gay. <laughs> they, they, they're not going to let any man violate them. And so what happened is because of that spirit that's been going on, a lot of people have been infiltrating the churches. Amen. There are a lot of that going on. There are many women who are sleeping with other women. They have their husband. And they have men who are allowing their wives to sleep with other women as long as it's not another man. Because they feel like, oh, you're not scheming on me. You know, it's keeping on me because it's not a woman, and I don't mind it. As a matter of fact, I get a little thrill out of it. I feel a little kinky. And sometimes the women invite the man in. They have a threesome because they feel that they're sharing. There are some ministries that actually do that. They have wives swapping in the ministries, and they do that. See, they don't want to talk to you about this sort of stuff because they know they're doing it, but they will be held accountable for it. They will be judged because the Lord is cleaning up his house. The Lord is cleaning up his house, and that is a wife-breaking spirit. And so they are either, uh, they're either perpetuating a fraud or they're going to clean up house and say, Lord, that is me. That is me. I'm, I've been doing it, Father, and I need to get out of it. I've been doing it for so long. Some of them been doing it for so long that it is, it, is, uh, it is normal to them. They can't even go without it, and they've been doing it for such a long time. Amen? And so that's sad to see when men of God, who have once been called by God, have resorted to doing this. That is judgment. You opening judgment. Just like how Eli couldn't control his sons and allow his sons, Phineas, uh, and I forget the other son's name to go forth and do what they want to do 
in the house of God. God had to raise up a Samuel. God is going to raise up Samuel in the house of God. Amen. Because it's still his house. And he's going to remove them from power. Those that have been doing this and perpetuating the same low down spirit that is that is not of God and is not is not just man love. It is not man love. It's sin. And sin and it's wrong, amen. And it's it's demonic and it's satanic, and it's 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 got to stop. You got to break the cycle, amen. And so there are men who are experimenting with this. They some people call it bi curious or bisexual. It is a word for it. It's called lesbianism and homosexuality. It's called sodomy and it's called uh, sodomites, amen. That's what it is, amen. And so God is going to raise up Samuel's who are gonna who are gonna move. At, 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 at the speed of God, he's gonna move when God moves. He's gonna have the fear of God, and God is gonna honor him. God is gonna honor his word. God is gonna lift him up. God is gonna uh, cause his word not to fall to the ground, and he's gonna anoint king. God is gonna cause kings to come out of your loin. God is gonna cause kings to come out of your loin to anoint kings. Amen. He anointed kings. He anointed Saul, he anointed Saul who played the fool, and he anointed David, who he didn't really live to see to be king. Amen. But his legacy lives on. Amen. Samuel was one of the judges. God is going to raise up judges who will do right, who will clean up the house of God. Amen. They're going to clean up the house of God. Too long, the house of God has been under attack. Too long, the house of God has been in disrepair. Too long, there's many evil birds that's been living in the house of God. That's why you go in there and sometimes you can't feel the presence of God anymore because there are too many man love in the church. They're, 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 they're loving up on one another. Amen? You can't feel the power of God. They have a form of Godliness. Yes, they might have to draw a crowd. Yes, they may have the, uh, the, 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 the rock star type um, effect. Amen? Yes, they may, yes, they may still song. Or yes, they may preach a good message. But they don't have any power anymore. There's no demonstration of the power of God. It's not just in word, but it's in deed. It's in demonstration. Amen? It's in power. You cast out the devils. You heal the sick. You give sight to the blind. You raise the dead. These are the type of anointing. You don't see them doing that no more because there's too much low down foolishness in the church. And it has to stop. Amen? It has to stop. God is breaking that spirit. Amen? That is a wife breaking spirit. Many wives know that their husband are doing it. But because of the husband position, because of is standing in society they have to suck it up because of the kids sake amen they don't want nobody to know but they're living a life of desperate of desperation they're living in quiet desperation because of knowing what their 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 husband is doing and if he ain't doing that he's sleeping with a bunch of women in the church amen he's sleeping with a bunch of women in the church or sleeping with a lot of the uh, women in the church or sleeping with a lot of uh, 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 men and women and you know what happened because of this low down spirit is known as the invisible is known as the invisible curse that's what it's called it's called the invisible curse in many uh, situations is known as the invisible curse because a lot of people been getting AIDS because of that and it's a low down form. I'm not saying that's the only way that you can get it because there's many ways. But because of that, it has opened up this spirit for this AIDS spirit. Amen. And so it is a spirit that perpetuates AIDS. So when a man finds a man extremely attractive in a funny way like that, you need deliverance, brother. You need deliverance. I don't care how you try to slice it. I don't care how you say you're born with it and you always felt like that. You need deliverance. Amen. And that's the entry point. And a crack and a seam for the enemy to have his way in your life. Amen. And if you've been doing that for 20 years, you'll have been living a life of a lie. And you can imagine how you must be living the life you guys uh, uh, doing that and you're doing a secret and you have to meet in different locations. That is, a, that is a funny way to live. And yet you're a man of God. Amen. If you're in that area and you're being challenged like that. Amen. You need to step down from your position. Get it right with the Lord. Get back on course. And God will restore you. Amen. It's called the low down macho man. The masculine macho man. And it's known as the invisible curse disease or the invisible disease. Wow. Are you guys getting this? They also got men who will go around and I call them I call them men who service these men. They will go around and men will pay them thousands of dollars just for them to dress up in negligee. Other men dressing up in negligee. And this guy was talking about how he wears eight thousand dollar sneakers that is given to him by these men and the men are in the church. He talks about how the men in church, and it is it, they say it was a black thing at first because the low down term comes from the black church, but it's really a it's really a church problem period. But it also with the white men, but they also have it with the black men because the black men, a lot of his identity has been hold withheld from him because a lot of times he the witnesses wife and 
sister and daughter being raped in front of him. And a lot of times the master would bugger him. The master would bug him in front of everybody. And so that took away his masculinity. And so that same spirit is still uh, perpetrating itself. Amen. And so a lot of the dignity has been restored back. But this guy said he wears $8,000 sneakers. He wears $2,000 shirts. He has a $5,000 watch on from guys who would give him. He said he charged them up to $5,000 an hour to do whatever they want to do. He said he's done everything that they wanted. And he said he only caters to men. He only caters to men. But sometimes the men would bring a woman in that he wants to sleep with. So they could sleep with the, all three of them, do a threesome. But he said he would dress up like a woman with uh, all his clothes on. And he would cater to them and do anything <coughs> for within the hour. And after that, I was up. He said he makes almost a million dollars a year to support himself in school. He said, and he, he's doing this till he finishes getting his degree. And after that, he's going to see where it goes. He said, because he can't see himself working in an office nine to five. He said, the money he makes is ridiculous. He said, he can't even, he can't keep his foot ringing. He said, they have apps. They have apps. One call grinder, one call gay app or lowdown app. I think they have these lowdown apps that they link up. And they set terms and prices on where they can meet and how they can do it. And these men are willing to pay. And he said, and only the only men that he deal with are men who are very affluent, men who are um, on Wall Street, men who are big companies, and big businesses. Many passes he deal with on the down low. <laughs> Mighty God. And I'm not trying to bring any aspersion or cast any doubt on nobody. I'm just calling it as it is. Amen. And that doesn't mean that 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 uh, that you should go. Uh, you should go and begin to um, um, begin to uh, uh, castigate anybody. It just means that there is problems that need to be solved, and you need to get to the root. If you don't get to the root, you will always be having the same old situation going on, and you wonder why you get sick today and it comes back again. You get sick today and it gets, comes back again because it's it's a symptom, but it's not the root. Amen. We must get to the root of the problems. Even the fruit is not the result. Uh, it's not the it's, it's the result of the of the root, but it's not the whole thing, and that's why we can't get to stop. That's why people will get partial deliverance. That's why we tell people sometimes you get you got you go to one one deliverance, and a couple months to think back. Why? Because we can't do the deliverance in one night or one day because it's too much. It'll kill you. You've been in that thing for so long. It's been so long term in your life. This thing been going on with your life for a long time. Do you think these spirits want to leave like that? They had you where they wanted you for such a long time. Amen. And now, it's okay to them. They feel good about it. They feel good about it. It's a good arrangement. I live in you. I make you do horrible things that you're going to regret. You hate yourself for doing it, yet you do it every time because it's money. The money, the payoff is good. And you could, you could do it discreetly and make a bunch of money. And there are, there are men that are doing it that are married. They go on these sites uh, and they, they have wives and they go and secretly meet men. The men pay them five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for... Uh, hour with them and they are able to support the lifestyle and they tell the wife they're going out of town on a business meeting but what they're going to do is they're going to meet up and have these things done and it should not be amen and so since we've gone beyond Sodom and Gomorrah we to the place where we're getting beyond Sodom and Gomorrah amen and so uh, I want to start praying with you guys you guys love this teaching if you really love this teaching I want you to share it I don't see a lot of you sharing a lot of you are on but you don't share it I, I wonder why you need to share it. That's all I ask you to do is share the teaching. Amen. If it's blessed you and if it's made a difference or an impact in your life, I need you to share it. Amen. Just, just do me a favor and share it. Amen. So, Father, right now. Yes, yes. Yeah, amen. Amen. I agree with you, Alain. That's, that's, that's the attitude. That's the attitude. Amen. And, and more is going to happen. It's going to happen. And you're going to find out that it keeps getting better and better and better and better. Amen. Amen. And, and better and better and better as we begin to uh, uncover and remove Peel back the layers. Peel back the layers. And so you finally deliver it. Amen. And as long as you live in this flesh, you have to be going through deliverance. As long as you're in this flesh, you can be going through fights and battles until the Lord come. And so you should continue to make it even, a, even like just like a car. If you don't service your car, what happens? Eventually the tire falls off or you get brake problem or the axle breaks or you run out of gas or you run out of water and you, you can't end up bankrupt. You should be toned up every, every now and then spiritually to see where you are because a lot of times you go through stuff and don't even know you're going through it. You're being attacked even when you don't even know it. Sometimes you're sleeping and picking up things. Sometimes you've been uh, in an atmosphere that you didn't even know was contaminated, but it looked on, on a natural like nothing happened. Then you got stuff with generational, uh, uh, ancestral, bloodline curses that don't want to let you go. You might have even got your mind delivered and set free, but yet the enemy still has been fighting that. 
after a few months, the person still goes to where they go to why? It's because they now are angry at you for beating them. Then there's some people out there who never wanted to see your marriage work in the first place. And it now comes to another level, amen? Okay, okay, no problem, Aline. <laughs> no problem. No problem. And that's what we want to do. We want to do some training at the at the conference. We want to do some training too, uh, some deep training. And um, we're going to get a select group that want it. And we're going to sit down. We can go for however we go. You know how we go, how we did it last time. We go from 9 <laughs> to 7. And we just take a break and go back because this is, we can do training, <laughs> deep training. Amen? Yeah, praise God. And we're going to do it also as well where we're going to have some courses that we're going to do. We're very deep, go very deep. Like I say, I can I can only put up so much on Facebook because there are a lot of people that are looking and and and, and um, they're taking note to figure out how they could stop it. Amen. So some things we gotta have a close uh, close conference, you know, close call. You know, this we call it a we call it a secure line. We call it a secure line. You ever hear someone say, "Is this line secure?" That means that nobody else could come in on it. That means that you're gonna get this uh, serious teaching that that is high class, it's advanced, it's high level. That nobody else could could come and try to see if they could figure out how they could stop you, amen. <laughs> wow, wow, Zelly, if you could work on that and find us, if you could locate some place or somewhere where we could host it, and and get some people together and we could promote it, we'll be happy to come over. Because uh, how you doing, Laban? God bless you, man of God. Welcome in. Yeah, we 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 do that because it's it's more powerful and and we don't have the resistance. Even now, as I'm teaching you guys, I can feel the resistance. I can feel people that are pulling. I can feel people that are. That are fighting, you know, you may not feel it, but I do, and I know, and I know who's real, and I know who's not. <laughs> and so, there are people who only want to get information about you. And uh, we've had in service where people come and tell us stuff that happened in the service that was supposed to be closed. In other words, you shouldn't go talk out of people's business, you know. And we've had people come and tell us exactly what's going on, so we know that that's the enemy, amen. Blah blah blah. I decree every anti marriage force, every anti-marriage force that's been fighting against your destiny, that's been fighting against your life, that's been fighting against your marriage, that's been fighting against you in any which way, shape, or form. I curse that anti-marriage spirit. I cancel that spirit of anger. And one of the greatest anti-marriage spirit is the spirit of anger. That anger spirit, that spirit of anger that fights the marriage, that seeks to destroy marriages, that seeks to destroy put, put, uh, potential marriage. That spirit of promiscuity, the promiscuous spirit, that have been passed on from ungodly in-laws, ungodly ancestral uh, bloodline forefathers. That strange man, strange woman, even that strange sexual partner that was in the occult. Many people are in the cult. We had a lady who we did deliverance on and we began to pray for her because she was always going through problems and she could not stop seeing other men. Because we would look at our door and every night on the hour another man comes by. Every night on the hour a different face comes by. So we begin to silently pray and pray and pray and pray. And eventually she came to us and tell us that it, it started for, uh, started a long time back. But one time she slept with a man and the man did a certain touch. He touched her a certain way and he did a certain uh, touch like that. And he said, I'll always be with you. No matter where you go, I'll always be with you. And you could never get rid of me. And she said from the time that he slept with her. And, she, and I told her, I said, you slept with a warlock. She said, yes, she know. He's into some deep things because he did some things that I told her that how he connected and he can see whatever she's doing, wherever she is. He'll always know what she's doing because he's connected to certain things. And he has his third eye open and he can watch her wherever he's going. And he did some other things to her. He would control her certain ways. And she never was able to fully get her deliverance. She got her deliverance. We told her not to go to a certain area, not to do certain things. After a while, we didn't hear from her. The last time we heard from her, she was running up and down the road naked. She was running up and down the road naked running down the road naked, you hear me? Because she didn't listen. She went back into the lifestyle because she got clean. She got delivered, but she didn't maintain it. She stopped doing what, she, what we said doing. She stopped, she stopped connecting with us for whatever reason, and uh, she just lost it. Some people don't understand. You've got to maintain your deliverance because the enemy is looking to get back in. And when he gets back in, it's hard for you to get deliverance because he brings seven more wicked spirits. That's the principle. He's smart now. He can bring some more powerful spirits that's more powerful than him. Amen? To kind of hold you guys, to hold, to hold it down. He, he knows that. And he can bring them in. Even if he had to share the space with you, with them. He can share it with them. Because he knows that by them being in there, he can have a strong man over you. And a strong man can make sure that he is the gatekeeper. That you ain't getting delivered just like that. And so whatever happens, it's harder. And your first estate is worse off than the second now. Because, I mean, the, your first is, the second estate is worse off than the first. Because now it's like this demon 
now has many friends with them and they invite their friends and so on and so on and so that's why when we do deliverance sometimes you know sometimes a hundred demons come to people sometimes a hundred spirits come to them sometimes it's too much you can't do it in one day because it's too much the spirit will literally kill them we want the spirit actually try to turn the woman head up and up in that thing I'm like this I kill her I kill her I kill her then he took away the bread from her Ugh! I kill her he said I kill her I, I'm not leaving her I marry her that's my wife that's mine she's mine I ain't going nowhere I kill her before I give it to you because she's been married I said how you get here I've been promised to her she pro I promised her she was promised to me I watch her grow up I watch her grow up I watch everything I did everything for her that's why I made her life a hell that's why I made her go crazy that's why I made people hate her <laughs> That's why I make her fight her husband. She she beats her husband. <laughs> she pick her husband up and lick her husband down. <laughs> Small little woman. Break her husband's ribs. Break her cousin them ribs. <laughs> have a mother, have a mother and daddy. <laughs> scared her. Everybody scared her. Because <laughs> the spirit husband is a giant man. He's about 15 feet tall. So he will break them up when he when he, when they make a mad and rah, rah, rah. go to go to go to go to go, wherever she go, break them up, cut, break their rib, mash them up, hit them all over the room. So have a family and friends living in fear. Have a husband scared of her. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree all matrimonial properties. Which the strange woman sat upon, I withdrew them in the name of Jesus Christ. All matrimonial properties that the strange woman sat upon, I withdraw them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I withdraw your peace, harmony, and unity between any love affair of the husband and a strange woman. If you have a husband and he's having unity and peace and joy, we break that apart in the name of Jesus Christ. We make sure that there's unity. Every time he goes around her, she will hate him. They will argue. They will fight like never before. Anytime she goes around a strange man, they will fight and curse one another out. And they will be angry with each other. And they will end up not even wanting to speak to each other. Every time they go around and try to connect, there will be misunderstanding in the name of Jesus Christ. of Nadine. Every strange woman that's holding your husband captive, he will wake up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadine. He will wake up. And come out of it and say, Will you? Who are you to me? What am I doing here? Because the spell is broken over his life. I decree, I decree right now, Lord, let the strange and unholy love affair between your husband and the strange woman die in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God. We stand against every power of polygamy. Polygamy in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us don't recognize it, but our ancestral line, we had going back all the way to Africa or wherever it may be your forefathers had many wives they had one wife here wife number one wife number two wife number three they had somehow 20 wives so this was considered normal and now you get married and you wonder why you are run out there all the time amen because your forefathers them they were polygamous they had polygamy some religion teach that that's okay Amen. And they, they literally had to ban it from the Mormons. The Mormons them was having five and six or ten, fifteen wives. You know, until they had to they had to ban it. They still think they're doing it secretly. Amen. He doesn't even say nothing about it. Because they believe in that. Amen. And, and and God changed that in the New Testament. Amen. You must be sober, one wife. You must have your children under control. You know, you must be you must be uh, blameless, amen. Amen. Good report. For you to be an elder, pastor, anybody in position spiritually, you gotta be a man of one wife, amen. Um, and that's what's happening. The enemy has tried to destroy that. I withdraw the favor of your husband from the strange woman in the name of Jesus Christ. I withdraw the favor of your husband with the strange woman in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care if the strange woman is spiritual or physical. I don't care if the strange woman is a mother or a sister or a cousin. I don't care if the strange woman or strange poison is a brother, uncle, whoever it is. Whether it be an aunt in law. I know this aunt said she is the one who break up her, her, her niece's husband uh, 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 marriage. She said she break it up on her deathbed. She asked her niece to forgive her. And the niece said, the niece said, what? The love of my life? You know, I was crazy with this guy. He was crazy with me. And for suddenly, we, we just broke up. We couldn't even understand what happened. We didn't know what was happening. We was, she said, on my deathbed, because God made her God made her tell it all. And she said, I'm the one who did it. I fixed the marriage 
because I didn't like him for you. I didn't like the fact that he was taking such good care of you. I didn't like the fact that he was treating you so good. I really was jealous of your marriage. You can imagine an auntie being jealous of her niece marriage, a proposed marriage, upcoming marriage, and break it apart because she was jealous of the way the man treated the, uh, her niece instead of her embracing it and feeling loved and happy. She decided to break it up. She destroyed the marriage and then on her deathbed, she is told you can't die unless you t confess this to your niece. Let her know. And her niece said, you did this to me? She said, yes, I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? She said, no. <laughs> and she died. Mouth open, eyes open. She gone. I mean, of course, God forgave her. You know, of course, because she, she did it. She did it. But it's just that she was so in shock. And it was like maybe 30 years later. And she said, I can never figure out what happened to this man. Uh, it's like the one that got away. Have you ever been in love with someone? And you said, my God, you know, I thought we were going to go to the altar. I thought that, you know, we'd never be apart. You know, we even had t-shirts together. We had, you know, we carved our name in the tree together. <laughs> we would write on each other's shirt. I got a tattoo of you. We got a tattoo of me. We were inseparable. And we don't know what happened. It just, it just somehow didn't work out. And you went and married someone else. And I never really fully got away. Somewhere along the line, if the truth be told, someone either spoke something against that, that particular union, or they did something to get that person away from you because they didn't want you with that person. I've had persons say, you know, I didn't like that person for you, but I never told you. Now that you break up, I can tell you that I, I was speaking against that and praying against that. There are some people that were praying against your marriage. There are some people praying that you will always stay in one position. There are some people because they never expected any good thing to come out of you. <laughs> and you happen to get married. They hate you for that. They would never come out and say they hate you. But they are fighting you behind the scene. And as I told you, God is getting ready to reveal and expose some people who are the source of your problem and bondage. And he's getting ready to remove them off the scene and remove the bondage because you've been going through it for a long time. Amen? Let every irreparable damage done between your husband and yourself and even the thing that you said that was so really damaging because if you said it in anger and out of frustration, I ask that God would forgive that. And even the spirit spouse that was making you be mean to your husband and making your husband be mean to you, I ask that Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will be reversed. And God, there will be healing. There will be deliverance. God, I decree that they will be praying for each other and that they will come back at the right time. Angels of God, go right now and disconnect the relationship between every strange woman that is fighting against your marriage and let them receive the judgment fire of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree every false flag, every false friend, everything they fed your husband or fed your wife, everything that they gave the strange woman a strange man, that gave them a hold by giving them too much information, that told them the secrets, and they used the secrets, and they used the info to craft a plan to, dis, to, de, uh, to destroy the marriage, and they broke the marriage up, and now the kids are feeling the pain, the kids are feeling the pain, because your husband up and left you, and now is living with a strange woman, and as a matter of fact, the husband is trying to serve you divorce papers, because she has him, in her grasp, in her grip. And those that gang up on you, we talk about we talk about the marital gang ups, how the strange woman and how the how the mistress and how the sweetheart, they have a clique and they have a crew that they figure out how they can get you. They have techniques and gang ups and they begin to pray to that end. They begin to plan and craft themselves. And the young lion, that is the young people who are savvy, who good looking uh, a 23 year old going with a married man and taking him to the cleaners. He's 50 years old and she has him under her, she has him under her thumb. She has him under, wrapped around a pinky. Amen. She don't care that she's destroying a home. She don't care that she's uh, making the woman now to go through so much hurt. Amen. To the place where she's ready to take her life. Amen. And she's the laughing stock of the whole town. She doesn't care because she's young. She, she Her body is is, uh, is good. She has a Good shape. She she's full of herself. She's she's brass. She she can get what she wants. She has nice jewelry. She has nice uh, taste. You know her hair is done right. She knows that she could talk good. Amen. She knows that she uh, has power in her in her raw. Her raw is 
Aha! That means she can talk good. She's smooth. She don't care. She knows she's breaking up the home and she don't care. Now, there are some who break up the home and uh, they're causing problems in the marriage and they're sorry. They don't know why they're doing it. They can't help themselves. This is a person you could possibly smile, uh, have some pity on. But you've got to be so radical right now. Even with a man who's doing it to the, to the marriage. Amen? He knows what he's doing. And then he's breaking up the house. Uh, uh, marriage, he's making the target. He's making the target. Amen? That's you. We reverse every curse. I reverse it of you, Cammy Camps. I reverse it of you, Rihanna. I reverse it of you, Stacey and Clasilda. I reverse it over you right now, and I decree your marriage shall be made in heaven. Your marriage shall be the stuff of heaven. Your home shall be a happy home. Amen? Anybody that wants you to get bored with your husband, bored with your wife, for you to walk out of your marriage and for you to complain and murmur, to push them out, I bind that spirit up and break it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nathan. I decree every stronghold of the marriage could be that the enemy is, is, is sent against your marriage. Every stronghold, every strong lock, I release that lock, that demonic lock on your marriage so you can't seem to come together. You can't seem to see eye to eye, to eye, to eye. Any spirit that doesn't want you to have any children for your husband, uh, I, I bind that spirit up and decree you'll be fruitful and you'll have many children for your husband. No strange woman or strange man will give your child uh, uh, give your wife or a husband a seed. Amen? You will not raise anybody's children. You will raise your own children from your own loins. I decree this to be so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nari. Every marriage, not of God, that they want you to get married uh, to. Any marriage that they try to shift you to, shift you to because they want to control the marriage. They even try to tell you who to get married too because they want to control the marriage so they can control you i break it apart amen i decree you'll marry the man that god has for you you'll marry the woman that god has for you if you find that you've been engaged for three and four and five years you got to check that something is wrong if you've been married for three four five if you've been engaged for four or five years something is wrong, not right you have an anti-marriage spirit fighting you you need to correct that you need to correct that because it's something that doesn't want you to get married. If you find that you've been married five, six times, three, four times and always ends in tragedy or in bad, then that doesn't mean you were wrong. That doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It simply means that there's something that is attached to your life that has been around in your family line for a long time. Mind you, other family members could get married, like a brother or sister might get married. And you say, well, why is me? That's because you don't want to target. You are the chosen in the family to, to try to perpetuate that cycle. They always have to find someone chosen. Do you know that? They call them the chosen. That you're chosen to carry the, the title and to carry the to carry their foolishness. They want you to become a full blown uh, uh, Sangoma or Nyanga or witch or warlock or whatever you call what do you want to call it. They want you to carry on the bloodline. So your, your, your brother might get married, your sister might get married, but you find out that you're the one not getting married. Amen. That's because this thing is a sign itself to you. And some people are more suggestible, they're more susceptible to these spirits. So we wanted to. I decree that if that's you, I decree you will no longer be susceptible to these spirit. I decree any strange woman, strange man, strange, strange mother, strange father, or whoever it may be, even strange best friend that doesn't understand the boundaries of a marriage, doesn't understand the boundaries, any one woman or man who is slowly, silently crafting a plan to steal you away from your husband or your betrothed or to bring problems in it, I command a disconnect right now. Disconnect, amen? I nullify that in the realm of the spirit. I nullify every evil judgment against your marriage, against your, your, your marriage to be. Uh, I nullify that and I decree and divorce. I ask for a bill of divorce from any spiritual spouse that's been fighting your life to keep you single, to keep you living a life where you don't want to get married, to keep you even attracted to the same sex. Any spirit that has been causing that, amen? I bind that force up. I curse it at the root. Into the living God. Go into their life. Go into their mind. Go into their, go into their subconscious and remove every evil pattern, every evil thought, every evil contract, every evil oath, every evil alignment, every Every evil spoken word, every evil trauma that has been aligned against them, anybody that suffered rape, abuse, child molestation, anything that's connected them, love up to these evil forces that is fighting their marriage, fighting their life, this marriage breaking spirit that has now been aligned to them. I break its power and I command a disconnect in the spirit. I command a disconnect in the spirit. I command the foundation of their life that has been evil to catch fire and burn to ashes. And I command the foundation of righteousness. I command right standing. I command right standing. Right standing with them. Let your kingdom, Father, be established in their marriage, and their marriage to be. If the husband has run off, if the wife has run off, I decree that wife and husband shall return. According to the covenant of the Lord, 
I decree it shall happen, it shall come together. I decree, Father God, Labraba, no matter how he runs or she runs, I decree the blood of the Lamb will bring them together. I decree the blood of the Lamb will bring them together. I, I, I decree the blood of the Lamb will bring them together. Labraba, every evil veil covering the face of Labraba, your husband, Labra, or your wife, Labraba, so they will never see you for who you are. The fire of God, a burn up that evil veil. Labraba, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nero, Labraba, Kuraba, Every every trap, every trap of destruction fashioned against your marriage, fashioned against your life, fashioned against your destiny, fashioned against your purpose, fashioned for you. Lord, to live a life, Lord, of pity, shame, misery, guilt. I bind the spirit of right now, and I command it to be disconnected from you. I command it to be obliterated, annihilated, eviscerated. Every serpent and scorpion against your household, whether it's the maid. Lord, some people take a maid in. I've watched maid come into people's house. Lord, and the maid begin to take the husband away from the wife. And sometimes the, the maid begin to take the woman from the husband. Take the woman from the husband. I've seen where the the maid come in. Know who's coming into your house. I've seen the house, the household help take away the husband and the wife. Sometimes they take the wife and take control of the marriage and destroy it from within. Any ancient servant operating through house help, the maid, the, 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 the uh, the handyman, the plumber, the electrician, the construction guy, the gardener, anybody that's coming around to whisper sweet nothings in your ears and seduce you because they have a mad breaking spirit attached to them. Only because someone has you, they want you. And the chances are they get you, the jig will be up in a couple of days because they'll be bored with you because reality will set in. I break the power of the adversary. Any custodian of household serpent, household scorpions, household snakes, household rats, spiritual rats that's gnawing at the marriage. I command it to be broken. I command it to be broken. And nullified by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over your life, over your destiny. I vomit up every press, every poison. I vomit up every poison. You vomit up every poison of the serpent and scorpion. We vomit it up right now. Vomit it up right now. Right now. Anything that's been entering your life, entering your home, entering your gates. Entering your car. Anything that's hitchhiking with you when you go town downtown they go with you when you go to the bathroom they go with you when you go to the market they go with you anything that's been more than you i command it to be vomited up right now in the name of jesus christ of Nadim. every serpentine pollution every serpentine pollution rubber against your health that's affecting your health to make it be a make you be a burden on your husband or wife i can't tell that right now in the name of jesus christ of Nadim. anybody that's causing you not to find work or find money so you could turn back to them. Be flushed out. Be flushed out. Be flushed out. Anything that's been holding blessings, holding money, holding contracts, holding jobs for your husband or wife. Attacking them. On their job. Inflicting harm on their job. I command them to catch fire and burn the ashes. Be swallowed every serpent and spirit. Uh, I've been causing trouble in your life, in your activity, in your marriage. Every uh, marriage breaking spirit that's stolen the joy out of your marriage. I I decree the joy will return back to your marriage. I decree you will be like never before in your marriage. It'll be like the first days you got married. Labrabah, you'll have joy and peace in the marriage. And your loved one, Labrabah, will return. I decree it'll return. Anybody that's causing your children, even your children can act as marriage breaking spirit. They're causing the husband and wife to fight against each other. They're playing the husband against the wife. Labrabah, I decree those children, Labrabah, will have manners, they'll have respect, and stop playing the husband against the wife and stop causing problems. I decree even the children, even Labrabah, if they want to be Mass breaking spirit that they have to go to. Get out, get out because if your husband or wife ain't happy with them and they coming around there not respecting the house, not respecting the time, not respecting the husband, not respecting the wife, then they gotta go. I don't care how it feel, they got to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, of matter. Either you follow the house rule or you gotta get rolled out. Every good thing in the life of the household wickedness and the spiritual spouse and the strange woman be paralyzed right now by Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command every evil, wicked load that they put on the marriage, put on your life. So you will never ever see the light of day. So you'll never ever see a marriage. I bind that spirit up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I decree, your marriage is being restored. Thank you. Your marriage is being restored. Your marriage is being restored. If you can believe this, if you can reach out and 
touch this right now. Your marriage is being restored. Your marriage is going to be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree God is perfecting everything that concerns you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have a perfect marriage. And God is restoring your marriage. I don't care how it looks in the natural. I don't care how it seems. I don't want you to rehearse it. I don't want you to speak out what you feel. I don't want you to speak out how it looks. I want you to agree with me that your marriage is being restored. Your marriage is being healed. I don't care how it looks in the natural. If you can believe right now, we've seen so many marriages restored. We've seen so many uh, marriages take place. So we know that there is an anointing for this type of of uh, a, a, a blessing to fall on the people of God. Amen? Fire of the living God. Uh, fire of the living God on everybody that doesn't want to see the mind restored. Amen? We pray for transparency. We pray for trans transparency. I decree you will get married in the season. You will experience marriage. You will experience love. You will experience the joy of marriage. And you will not only have it, but you will have someone that adores you. I don't, I'm not saying that he's not going to correct you and check you sometimes. But for the most part, you're going to see that this man loves you, that Christ loves the church. And you also have to submit to him and not nag and complain all the time. And stalk yourself out and open the door and give the crack on the entry point that the strange woman or a fox is looking for. They're looking, they're, cross, they're cruising around looking for that entry point. They're circling around looking for that entry point. Amen? So I speak healing to you. Some of you, you're going through healing. You need any healing because of the, the pain that you suffered in the marriage, the pain that you suffered going through whatever you went through, the hurt of the divorce, the hurt of the laughter and the discouragement, the hurt of your parents or your family saying, see, I told you so. See, some people say, I see, I told you so. I tell you, don't you marry him. So they have an occasion now to try to bring a railing accusation against you because the enemy will align you with people now who are going to say that stuff. I break that right now and I decree you will have the last laugh in the season. You will have the last, last, last laugh in the season. I thank you for the joy of restoring my marriage. I want you to say that. Thank you, Lord, for restoring my marriage. Thank you, Lord, for me getting married. Thank you, Lord, for me coming out of this thing. Thank you, Lord, for me not living in fear of marriage i declare instant judgment against any strange man or strange woman militating against your marriage and your love life anybody that's hoping to take your place that's hoping to take your place in the marriage i command them to be destroyed by holy ghost fire amen go find your own the bible says drink from your own wells drink water from your own wells and drink water from your own sisters amen Drink from your own wells. Drink your own water. God got someone for everyone. No As a matter of fact, he got someone for, uh, he got, I think, a seven to one. So, mostly for men, but now there's a lot being born in men. So, you wait for yours. But like, like, again, like I say, these women are cruel. Amen? It's cruel. Amen? Because when you give your life over to them, the Bible says, least thou give thine honor unto others and thy years, and thy years unto the cruel. Least a stranger be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of stranger. You know what that means? That simply means that you're going to be working for this person and you ain't going to see nothing. There's no investment. Nothing you can see at the end of the day. You can build for them. You can do all this for them and they can be cruel to you at the end of the day. Amen? And guess who can come pick you up? You, your, whole, your wife can come pick you up. Your husband can come pick you up. Many times we've seen where people are sick on a dying bed and the woman who is with for all those years who pull you away from the, the husband or the wife, the, the woman who you was married to had to go back and get you and bring you into the house and take care of you. Amen? And and and, uh, uh, and that's the one who who really really truly love you, amen. Just like what uh, 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 what Jacob said, he said, "Bury me with Leah." He didn't say, "Bury me with Rachel." He said, "Bury me with Leah," <laughs> because he recognized that she truly loved him. Yes, Rachel loved him too, but Leah loved him. He said, "Bury me with Leah." That means that the one who really truly loved me. I had to see it after all these years. I finally got it. I finally got the memo, amen. And the Bible says, "Drink waters out of your own cistern and running waters out of thy own well." In other words, you wait for yours. Let your foundations be dispersed abroad and the rivers of waters in the streets. Amen? So that means that you will be prosperous. Amen? And your fountains will burst forth. That means you'll be blessed. Amen? And you, that means your offspring. Let them be thine own and not the strangers with thee. Let their fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished with her love. Amen? So what has caused you to fall away from your first love? What has caused you to fall away from your wife? Amen? What has caused you to fall away from your husband? Who has bewitched you? Oh foolish 
Galatians, who has bewitched you from the simplicity of the gospel, amen? Who has bewitched you that a stranger should now, you would give your wealth to a stranger and, 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 and the years of your life to the cruel, amen? You, you, you're given your years, the years, the good years of your life to the cruel, amen? And, and they're, they're secretly, inwardly, they're being used to destroy your life, amen? For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondered all his going. God knows your ways and going, amen? His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. And he should be holding with the cause of his own sin. That means that those who are trying to break marriage, those who are fighting against your life, fighting against uh, God's, uh, the, the first institution of God's sanction, God said they're going to be caught in their own snares. They're going to be caught in their own sins. And they're going to be holding fast with it. That means that you can't get out of it. Amen? He shall die without instruction. Mighty God, that's a horrible thing. And the greatness of his folly, he shall go straight. In other words, he can't even see the foolishness he's doing. I know a gentleman right now, he, his wife loves him so much. Yet he up in his in his sixties, and he's still he's still posting pictures of his sexual past on 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 different platforms to these young women, who are only nineteen and eighteen, you know. And yet his woman, his wife, loved him, been through everything with him when he was nobody, when he raised, when when uh, when he got famous and got you know um, all his attention and all his notoriety. Then he switched. There are many women who were with their man when he was nothing. When he you know, he, he only had one pair of pants and only two pennies to rub in his pocket. Then he became very successful. He became very uh, 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 big man in the community, big man around town. You know, he became so uh, extremely powerful in his own, you know, in his own circle and become very wealthy. And then he turned around and threw her to the side or vice versa. And they threw her to the side and, and don't want them to do them no more because they live they, in a different circle now. And because the person might not be able to speak well or be able to talk like how you talk, but that person stayed home as you to go to college. That person mind the kids while you was getting your promotion and getting these different certification. And then when you reach and when you arrive, no, they no longer for you. You don't even go with them no more. You want to hide them in the home or whatever the case may be. You're not, you're not, you're not proud to, to be seen with them because you move with a new crowd, the new in crowd. You know you got to be careful with that because that's going to come back to you. You're going to find that that comes back to you, and you can be ashamed because that very person is the one who truly loves you and is with you because they saw you at your worst. Those people, those people who are around you, they they only looking at the flash. They only looking at the flash in the pan. They only looking at what you look like now, eh? Because they see you as something. So there's always gonna be a wolf out there. There's always gonna be foxes out there. There's always gonna be different types of of players out there, or whoever the place, whoever the kids may be. Like I say, some they're gonna they're gonna be attracted to you simply because of the anointing upon your life. They can be attracted because they see the glory of God on your life, but they attracted you for the wrong reasons. Amen. They're not attracted because. Uh, 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 they want to hear more about God. They're attracted because they want you. And so God has to expose them. Amen. You have to be very much on God and guard your life, guard your relationship, guard everything that God has given you um, and keep it in prayer. Now, you can do everything for a person. You could be the best husband. You could be the best wife. You could be. They still walk out. You didn't open the doors. You, didn't, you have no, there was no entry points. There's no exit point. You did everything you could do for them. They still walk out. Well, that's because they, they wanted to do it. Amen. Your hands are clean. You're, you're guiltless. Because they still open the door. Even the person who is caught with the other woman, he had to go forth and give her the keys. Or the, other, or the other man, they gave him the keys. They started negotiating. They started talking. They started sending each other secret texts. Amen? Messaging. So it was something that was being built up over a period of time. Amen? And so uh, you got to correct them. Correct those things. Check those things. We get to check, correct, and, and uh, get those things done. Amen? And so you need to be very aware of what's going on and God that which God has given you, amen? Uh, and and even you have to be a good steward of everything, amen? And always you can see eye to eye, teeth and tongue just fall out. You have occasions, there can come a point in your life where you want to walk out of marriage or walk out of out of you know out of your marital bliss, you know, of your home because some things come up it was very rough. And see that's when you tell what the marriage is made of. If you have glue, if the glue is God, if you've got as the center, then eventually you can come back together. Amen. No matter how uh, much you fight or how much you you know disagree with a certain point you will come back together amen and so that's why you'll be on one accord amen and so it's good to know your place in the hierarchy of the relationship if the woman is leading the relationship there's gonna be problems if the woman is the head there's gonna be problems because that's not god's role that's not god's intention amen the man has the lead the woman has to submit amen not not that he's her boss not that he's a chief but his guidance amen because that's how god honored it that's how god ordained it if adam had said listen eve you, you come around here with this thing? No. It would have been a different story today. But he allowed the woman to lead him. And because of that, we've been in trouble for such a long time. Look at what we're going through now. That's because of one fruit. Because of his belly. 
It all has to do with appetites, the belly. <laughs> can't discipline himself. She can't discipline herself. Instant gratification. What the eye seed wants. Eh? And so that's what happened. Because of that same eating of that fruit. And Adam could have said no. He was not saying he didn't go to him. He know he can trick him. Because men are logical. Men know that that was wrong. He, he worked on the woman who was emotional. And because of that, there's always been pain. Amen? And so we will end with that. Amen? So that's something to think of. Amen? So we cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ. If not, we just plead the blood over everyone watching. And we ask that God, you will, Father, will bless everyone today in this broadcast. And we'll see you real soon. Amen? We'll see you at the service on Saturday, God's willing. And we know God's going to do something marvelous today. Amen? We're going to celebrate what God has done in the aftermath of Dorian. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.